going on, everybody? Welcome back to another fantastic episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I am your host, Nick. I'm a dad. It's a different Nick these days. That sounded weird, but either way, I'm a dad. I'm super excited. Uh, my loving fiance, Natalie, is um, home with our beautiful daughter, River, and doing quite well. Um, so uh, it's me in the household right now. Uh, we got uh, the crew of Sweet Boy Justin and Leia with us. Hello. Allie is uh, with some family in Minnesota. The rest of the household is grinding their way in. Uh, like, what do we? What should we call like? Where you guys are operating on the I edit mean, bay? The edit bay. We've talked about this because originally you said minions. You know, I was, just, I was, which uh, isn't derogatory, but I was just like, hmm. It, it's a bit condescending. The house. <laughs> nah. Oh. They're cooking in the kitchen. The, cooking I in was the gonna say the kitchen, and then I was like, Is I like that the even? kitchen. <laughs> I like the kitchen. Cooking in the kitchen. That's pretty good. Anyway, we have another banger and an interview today. I told you guys we weren't lying when we when we started 2024. And this episode is no different. The iconic Denise Richards is with us, and we couldn't be more excited. She was absolutely lovely. I don't want to give too much away. Other than the fact that, like, she was just, like, so fun to have around. I mean, like, when you have a, someone like Denise Richards, who's been in Hollywood for, I don't know how many years, has had the type of success in Hollywood that she's had, uh, and we get into that, you know, has been in high-profile relationships. You don't really know what to expect, right? You know, you don't know what kind of diva could show up. And even if a diva shows up, you're kind of like, well, you know, you're Denise Richards. So it's like, yeah. Um, she had such a motherly presence. Yes. And like, was, I'm, I'm a mama's boy. So when she came in, I was like, oh, she was like, so, please. you know, she, she talks a little bit, not to give too much away about being from the Midwest. And it like, it, sh it came through. I don't know. That was my takeaway. But we had so much fun with Denise. Again, we don't want to spoil the interview. We'll let you guys listen to it. But um, it was great to have her. We really enjoyed it. And I'm excited for you guys to listen to it. I don't want to give too much away about, like, obviously the arrival of our daughter, River, because I want to do that with Natalie, you know, and I, I don't want to speak for Natalie's experience. And, and when it comes to our experience as a couple, as parents, I want to save that for uh, when Natalie returns, which is TBD. I, I think it'll be hopefully sooner than later, but uh, we're lucky enough to have family around. And, and um, but right now she's focused on just recovery and, and being the amazing mother that she is. I, honestly, I'll, that's the only thing I really want to say. It's just like how in awe I am of Natalie and just how amazing she is as a mom and just watching her. I was in such awe of how she went through the whole delivery process and, you know, as a mom now and just, it's so like, she's so hot. Like I've never <laughs> been more turned on by her um, than I am seeing her being a mom. It's just, I'm just so proud of her. I just think she's been so incredible and it's been so fun to watch. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm just really proud of her. You know, mm, she just, did that. She really did that. And our daughter is so beautiful. She's beautiful. I was fully prepared. You didn't know what to expect. You don't know how she's going to come out. And honestly, yeah. who knows how she's going to turn out? You know, she's a little larva right now. <laughs> uh, I got that from <laughs> Rumor Willis called me uh, last night to catch up. And Rumor is a new mom as well. And she referenced as the larva stage i'm like that's great because she really i mean she really is it's just a little baby like larva girl <laughs> i didn't really know what to expect you know but as soon as she came out like I'm, i mean as soon as she came out and like every day that every day she changes but like i was like oh my god you're stunning <laughs> like she's a pretty baby yeah she's so pretty objectively too like you're the dad so of course you're gonna say that but no i yeah Objectively, objectively yeah. beautiful yeah. like I, I will say i don't usually find babies cute but when you sent the picture in the chat i was like oh, it's a little baby it's like i really the only question is like does she sign with like ford right. or wilhelmina like i don't oh, true. Like, i don't oh it's so many choices but uh you know all jokes aside uh, we're just happy she's she's doing great and um congratulations thank you you know it's from a dad like just on my own side of things um it's been great like it was kind of fun you know, we were at the hospital for, uh, you know, a couple nights and we're food snobs. So, you know, we're, we weren't eating hospital food. So I would always like go out and get um, breakfast, lunch and dinner and bring it back to the hotel. <laughs> bring it back the to hotel. the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, close enough. Close enough. 
And um, every like I'd always see like other what I presumed were dads. So I'd be like, you know, one of us would all kind of say hi, like, oh, you uh, new dad, you oh know? And so that was always kind of fun. And then I met one guy in the elevator and I think I said something to him, kind of like new dad or, and then we'd ask each other and he looked so familiar. I was like, man, that motherfucker like looks familiar. And then last night I got a DM and I don't know if you guys, how big of sports fans you are, but Walker Bueller uh, of the LA Dodgers, he's uh, the pitcher for the LA Dodgers. Very, very good. Is pitcher. Kershaw not the, still the pitcher? Uh, I, I don't know if Kershaw still plays with the Dodge- oh. Dodgers. Uh, mm. He's Kershaw's. Uh, at the end of his career, if it's okay. not, so I don't know if he's new. retired. I don't know. But Walker Bueller, uh, stud pitcher. It it was that was That's him. That's so cool. And he sent the DM, and he's like, "Was that you in the elevator at Cedars?" And I'm like, "Motherfucker, yeah." So <laughs> that was kind of funny. Uh, congratulations to him and his. I don't know if he's married or engaged partner or whatever. Congratulations to that couple, and I think I believe they had a daughter as well. Um, but that was that was really kind of fun for me just to see other dads and kind of like I didn't really get to know any of them, but just that bonding experience was pretty cool. It's like an unspoken, yeah, right. We're bonded like, for life now. And yeah, just knowing that like our kids were all born, you know, either on the same day or just like the same time. Um, and it's been like raining here in LA, so that was kind of cozy and fun to like come home and to just like rain and just mm-hmm. chill and. Uh, and sit, but it's a sample into like the future dad clubs that you'll be joining. Where you like walk the strollers together in the morning. No, totally. Cause like, yeah, even with that, like I, I, I told them I was like, hey man, like you know, if you want to pass your lady's information out, like we're def, like we're definitely in the market for like cool parents because our whole future is going to be, uh, we're going to be hanging out with whoever our kids are making friends with, mm-hmm. and they, like, we kind of make sure they don't suck. They could be going to the same school. Yeah. So we're we're. We're in the market for sure. Exciting. Yeah. I could go on and on, but um, I'm going to wait for, for Natalie to, to get into the nitty gritty. What do we have? Uh, what's been going on in the world before we get to Denise? Did you watch the Grammys? I watched uh, a lot of it. Not all of it. A lot of drama. Uh, Killer Mike got arrested. And then we had uh, mm-hmm. Taylor made a big announcement. You had the Tracy Chapman. That To me, that was the moment of the night when Tracy Chapman came and performed. I don't know how familiar you, you all are of Tracy Chapman, but. Uh, a little bit fast cars it's natalie's favorite song it's my mom's favorite song it's just an iconic song it's so good and then modern day like luke combs country star excellent musician he made it popular for like gen z and like modern fans but it's been an iconic song forever and tracy chapman hasn't performed in a long time that was amazing that was nostalgic for me uh and then a lot of taylor drama not 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 shocking um everyone's just always trying to like as famous as she is and as many fans as she has, like, you know, when you're that big and you know, people are just always looking for something to nitpick. You know, there was the whole Celine Dion drama, people yeah. accusing her of ignoring her. And it's just like every little beat is like people are watching every little move she's making. It's so fucking annoying. Yeah, they're very They're looking for something to bring her down. That's yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. super annoying. But Justin had a good point about that Celine Dion thing with the stiff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know too much about it, but people were saying that because she Taylor posted a picture with Celine after yeah. she walked the stage, yeah, but she didn't that. hug her on the stage. So people were just assuming that maybe it was like the stiff person's disease thing that Celine has right now. Maybe where she was uh, like knows? respecting the space because you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Who knows the reason? Or maybe, yeah. maybe in that moment she forgot. I don't know. Maybe she was like Taylor Swift is still a human being it's who fair. can get swept up in emotions and winning awards and it's like yeah maybe it was just an honest mistake I, it certainly wasn't uh an, a diss if not like taylor swift throughout the grammys was the only one who was always standing and like cheering them along on, yeah. and cheering along every goddamn performer but no no no. taylor swift is going to take her opportunity while winning best album of the year to publicly diss Celine Dion? no like that's just fucking stupid so you'd have to assume that taylor swift someone who is highly strategic and intelligent would do that why what's the motivation that's just fucking dumb that's just haters hating for no fucking reason um yeah i mean speaking of haters hating kelsey ballerini was also someone that kind of had like backlash yeah yeah, that she had to respond so like just from like a reaction because from like a reaction yeah which easily could have been out of context again i don't i guess most people haven't been to these types of award shows i haven't been to many but they're fucking boring to be honest they're boring like, and especially if you're a celebrity who's been to multiple ones of these, you're thinking about God knows what you could have, you know, in that moment, she might have been thinking about what she has to do tomorrow. Maybe someone's like, oh shit, I got I got this on Tuesday. 
and that popped into her head. And mm-hmm. then there's a camera at that moment. At in that moment, you know, like me, my fucking like absent minded like brain who's constantly God only knows Spacing what I'm out. thinking out at any given moment. Like, oh no, but I'm sorry. Every celebrity needs to be super present and honor whatever's going on on stage because whatever fan of that celebrity, God, it, what is it about music fans? Are the they're the most kind of you know they're the most toxic music fans it seems the fan bases of like artists art, music artists seem to be the most yeah toxic and I, by toxic i mean the most like aggressive uh in terms of defending mm-hmm. you know the, the people they're fans of or just creating drama they're the most dramatic it's because yeah. they want to say like my artist is like the better artist so it's like a superiority thing like, why can't we just enjoy it all yeah well and like kelsey had said like a woman's win is a team win why like write about that instead so yeah i don't they choose the drama versus like the celebration which is interesting and and no one's going out there being like i can't like a taylor swift song because i like a selena gomez song i mean i I, you know selena and taylor are good friends so maybe their fan bases are an alliance but whatever it is i don't know olivia rodrigo yeah like who gives a shit i mean it's so fucking dumb well congrats to taylor congrats to taylor yeah people even gave her shit for bringing trying to bring lana del rey up on stage with her because lana was also nominated in the same category but like she worked on the album and like their friends they arrived to like snow on the beach yeah yeah, yeah they, i would love to get lana on the show Ooh, i really would uh, I, I one time went to like a random karaoke thing and she just happened to be there and like came up really? on stage like when somebody was doing a, one so of her songs cool. the first time i saw lana del rey was at Lollapalooza in like 2014 i didn't even know who she, i'd never heard of her and she was performing on one of the smaller stages she wasn't as like big mm-hmm. as she was then i mean people freaked out is you know because i was like we gotta go see lana del rey who's lana del rey and like how do you not know and then we went i was like immediately just in awe She's like amazing. in love with her music yeah. and i you know because it was such a vibe it was such it was like and i started listening to her music constantly it was like one of those shows you see and discover an artist and the next three weeks you're like you're just playing on all their songs on repeat yeah. so i definitely had a lana del rey moment now yeah. she's headlining coachella <sighs> there i there know and i can't go that's what's oh. so i'm so mad that the <laughs> coachella lineup is no it actually wasn't the coachella she's also headlining some other there were three major headlines, and I'm like, "Fuck, this looks." This and it wasn't good. Coachella. It wasn't Coachella. It was uh, Hangout Fest. Primavera. What's Hangout Fest? Well, who is? Let me see. Who is performing at Hangout Fest? SZA. No, oh, that'd be good. SZA, love. This is great. Love. Congratulations um, Zach, to her, by the way. Yeah. Zach Bryan and Chainsmokers, Odessa. Odessa, yeah. Zach Bryan, Odessa, and Lana Del Rey. So Hangout Fest. Three awesome headliners. Oh my god. Oh, Whoa. I know. Alabama. Oh, maybe I should go. Wait, why can't you go? We'll see. We're having too much fun with our daughter. She's just the fucking coolest. <laughs> you may not want to go. I fucking love being Some bad. people bring their babies to festivals. Have you seen that? And they give them the little headphones, the headphones. but it's a little scary. Yeah. yeah, we're not. We're not those parents. Now and I will still, I'm sure, have fun. And we're very lucky and, and fortunate to be able to either have help because of family or afford help. So uh, we're very lucky that way. But no, I'm not bringing my fucking toddler to a festival. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't either. What is this about uh, Taylor Swift uh, threatening legal action? Yeah, so all we all know that Taylor Swift flies her private jet yeah, pretty yeah. often. There's like because she can't fly commercial. Yeah, she really can't. Taylor Swift. There's a junior at a University of Central Florida. He's known for tracking celebrities and their like routes with their private jets. So essentially, Taylor Swift's team is threatening legal action, and they're saying it's for a constant state of fear for her personal safety. So she doesn't like that she's being tracked. I wouldn't either if I was Taylor Swift, you know, because it always it always leads to these uh, other harassment when it comes to flying jets and the fuel emissions and mm-hmm. things like that. And I'm all for keeping our Earth uh, beautiful and clean, but I fly in planes too, um, yeah. and every situation is different. She probably won't win because I, there's it's public information. Yeah. But in America, for better or worse, anyone can sue anyone for anything, and so. To me, this is Taylor Swift, you know, flexing her muscles a little bit, being like, leave me the fuck alone. Because, like, she may not win, but she can use her vast amount of resources. If she sues this guy, he will have to defend himself somehow. It will be costly for him. Well, I think she would win in, like, the public eye. Yeah. Because she has such a big fan base. Well, I I think it's just more about getting him to stop and, and making it costly for him. Yeah. He He doesn't have to lose for it to be costly. Yeah, I think he'll just go away. At a certain point. It's it's annoying. Yeah. 
I know Taylor Swift chose to be a public figure. I get it. But like, that doesn't mean she has to give up all amount of privacy. And it doesn't mean that like, we should just be able to harass her. I wonder how many people try to sue her. Who knows? I don't know. But I mean, she truly has, feels like unlimited resources. So like if I'm, just counter sue. Well, I guess she's suing him, right? She's suing him. Right. But yeah, I mean, any celebrity, you know. It's a big fight regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I, good for her for defending herself. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not a litigious person, but and that mu- I, that must be frustrating, mm-hmm. you know. And the she fallout. deserves she she deserves some privacy. We had, there are bigger problems in the world than focusing it on where Taylor Swift is flying and how much fuel her jets u- losing. That is not the biggest problem our world is facing today, and never mm-hmm. will be. And honestly, like if that's the hill you want to die on, then like you're 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 not doing the world any favors. You're just being petty. That it, that's it. You're just, that's your way of being toxic and trying to feel righteous about it. P- people do it all the time. People find righteous endeavors as excuses to be petty and toxic and dramatic yeah. all the time. And that's all this guy's doing. He doesn't give a shit about anyone else but himself. And it is not because yeah. he cares about the environment or the world or a better place. Like there are so many more meaningful things this person could be investing his energy in to making the world a better place, even when it comes to like uh, the environment, than stalking uh, Taylor Swift's flight plans. T, there yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Did you see that Bachelor Joey? Oh yeah, Joey. I saw that. What a, what an L for Joey. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, she there. Who, who, who did the interview? I'm reading this from People Magazine, at least. Okay. Um, but he confused Gypsy Rose Blanchard for being Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, that's definitely an L. That's an L. Uh, not because he didn't know who Gypsy Rose is. I mean, which we'll forgive him for that. I mean, she is. I, she she is super famous right now. Gypsy Rose and super relevant. Uh, friend of show, but Ruth Bader Ginsburg, am I icon. Right? She is. A hero, hero to so many women of this country. And to be The Bachelor, uh, a show that is primarily an audience of women, and to confuse that hero by so many people with Gypsy Rose, ugh, not a... They also just don't look alike. No. Well, I don't not, think what do you... I don't think he was confused. <laughs> like, is that what it was? Or did I like... I think he more so mixed up their name. I don't think so he who like do you think saw... who was who? Did he think a former Supreme saying. Justice was named Gypsy Rose? Or did he think someone who killed their mom <laughs> via Munchausen was named Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Oh, no. Like, which one was it? Let's see. We, uh, we famously had uh, Katie Thurston on. Oh, this is long before uh-huh. any, of, any of you guys. This is long before the household even existed. I, it might have been, I wish Allie was on. It might have been right. No, Allie and Amanda were with us. I know this because Amanda uh, selected the questions. But we, we used to play this game called uh, Do You Know Me? It's mm-hmm. a fun, like, uh, it's like uh, Cards Against Humanity. It's, it's more of one of those, like, card games that you get together at a dinner party and you ask, like, random questions. Do you know me? Have you ever, like, done this? Have you ever done that? Random questions. And one of the questions that Amanda selected was, can you name five countries in Africa? Oh, this is scary. You should know. This can is you a name scary five, game. Can you name five countries in Africa? Five. Kenya, Jakarta. Okay. Egypt. Egypt. Madagascar. Yeah. Of all the all the countries in Africa, of which there are many, mo- most of which I don't know. Like I'm not trying to be like some sort of like geography king here. See, this is a scary game too, though, because when you're put on the spot with a question sometimes, it's like my whole brain just forgot. Like I don't know my name anymore. I mean, Natalie's terrible at geography. But anyways, I'm bad at anything when I'm put on the spot like that with like um, a question. I will say, so I looked it up what Joey's situation was. So it was part of a how online are you segment. Mm. And the interviewer pulled up a picture of Gypsy and said, who is this? And he said, I don't know who this person is. Is it Ruth? No. Is it Ginsburg? Ginsburg? Something like that. Okay. So he saw a picture of Gypsy and was like, that's Ruth. Oh, that's even worse. Mm. Or it's just they don't look well, alike. Well, he has no idea who... He's heard the name Ruth Bader Ginsburg and had no idea the impact that she who that that she was a Supreme Court justice. Mm-hmm. Right. No offense to Gypsy, but that picture does not look like a Supreme Court justice. It looks like a twenty something, thirty something year old. Did he think it was an old photo? Maybe. No. No. Mm. And well, an older photo would be even younger Gypsy. Right. But anyways, uh, so we had Katie on. That was one of the questions. Katie had, <laughs> couldn't name it. And she, uh, I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, honestly. 
but the audience, Bachelor Nation, reacted. Right. Came for her. Uh, they came for her hard. I felt bad. Of all the things, I don't know if that was something to come at Katie for, but um, yeah, people can be mean about that. I wonder how much heat, heat Joey's getting for it. I guess we'll see. Yeah, he was uh, doing so well. An educated man, you know? He was doing so well, too. Like, he was really, you know, in the grand scheme of things, not getting too much hate. Like, everyone loves him. Does it ruin, like, does it take any, like, is he just so, has he solidified himself as just a mimbo? Listen, I didn't think he was the most intelligent person before. But like, we didn't really know. We didn't know. We had no idea. He's well spoken. Mm -hmm. He did say, I don't know what I'm saying. So I don't know if that changes your perspective. Self awareness is a sign of intelligence. So you, you I, I don't know a lot of fucking things, you yeah. know? And no, it's that, that doesn't mean he's not smart or not smart. It's yeah. just a bad, it's a bad look. But him being a tennis player, tennis, tennis is a, it's a rich person sport. And people with monies implies like the privilege of education. So there's that. The fact that he's a big time tennis player is less of an excuse for him to not know. Does that make sense? Yeah. He yeah. Should, like, I don't it's think... an L. It's an L for Joey. It uh, makes him seem like more of a mimbo than maybe a well rounded bachelor. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, though, it, he's still, he's I still, still love him. Which honestly makes me feel good because at the end of the day, it just means that like humans, not just men, at the end of the day are just superficial. There is no greater privilege in this world than pretty privilege. Yeah. It's not the only one, but being rich, famous, and attractive, there, that is a privilege like none other. And Joey is uh, experiencing it. <laughs> well, I think it's time to get to Denise. How about, what do you guys think? Um, I think so. Very excited for you guys to listen to this episode. We'll break it down. Uh, next Tuesday. Next uh, Tuesday, we have uh, an amazing guest. Uh, the one and only Diablo Cody is with us. Uh, you may know her. She was the writer Oscar winning writer for the movie Juno. That was very popular back like 10 or so years ago. She has a new movie coming out that she wrote. Lisa Frankenstein saw it. It's amazing. It's the same quality that you can come to expect from an Oscar winning writer. Uh, she is with us. She's also a big pop culture and reality TV fan. There was a time back in the day uh, that uh, my agents were trying to get Diablo Cody to maybe develop a podcast show with me and her. I don't even know if Diablo knows that. It could have just been our team's talking. I knew that. It never happened. So Full circle. Full circle. But she is with us next week on Reality Recap. We'll be breaking down episode two of Vanderpump, Bachelor, Traders. We'll get into some Housewives. I don't know what shit's going to go out in pop culture world, but if it does, we'll be talking about that as well. Uh, anything else before we uh, jump into things? Next week on Going Deeper, we have the iconic reality TV queen herself, Wow, is with us. And that is also a banger of an episode. So much fun talking with Wow. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that conversation. What a delightful human she is. Like, th we recorded it uh, just before uh, we had our daughter, uh, River. Oh, which, by the way, turns out River, super popular name these days. Manon, who was a guest on uh, Reality Recap not too long ago, she DM'd me. Uh, she had her son a few weeks ago named her son River. Apparently, oh. it's like a popular boy's name. And I, I said to her, we're like a couple of uh, parents in the 80s who thought they were super hip and trendy when they named their kid Tracy and Nick. <laughs> like, there were like seven Nicks in grade school when I grew up. So, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we love the name. It's a beautiful name. Yeah, River Rose. Uh, Rose is after Natalie's uh, 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 grandmother. We just love her. She's just perfect. I think that's about it. Denise. Denise. Let's, uh, let's bring on Denise, everybody. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo, bravo. This episode is brought to you by Care of. Care of is a well care care of is a health and wellness company that ships high quality personalized vitamin supplements and powders conveniently to your door every month. Care of offers a curated set of products that are designed to work with research back ingredients and optimal doses. I mean, listen, uh, vitamins are a great way to supplement your nutrition. The hard part for people like myself is I'm very forgetful and I get out of my routine when it comes to vitamins. And also like thinking about vitamins is the, there's this like assumption that all vitamins are created equal. And that's just not true. There's so much crap options out there. So it's nice to have a quality vitamin product like Care Of that makes it super easy to like be regimented. They make these like little individual packets for you. So whatever vitamins you need, you take a quick like assessment of what you're looking for and they make a plan that's designed specifically for you and your needs. And then the once they do that, they make these like very nice like personalized itemized little pouches that are easy to travel with. So you don't have to bring a bunch of bottles and things like that. It's wonderful, convenient, 
And good for you. All you need to do to get started is take a short, simple online quiz about your lifestyle and health goals, and Care of will give you a doctor-backed recommendation. It's that easy. Care of app helps you track how you are feeling and play back insights about your results over time so you can adjust your routine as your needs change. Care of's daily vitamin packs are made with plant-based composable film to help limit the impact on the environment without com- compromising on the quality and safety of their product. Also, something new Care of wants to share with you, some of their best-selling vitamins are now available in bottles if you're not ready to subscribe to Monthly Pack. So to get 50% off your first month subscription with Care of, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code VIALL50. Again, that's TakeCareOf.com with code VIALL50 for 50% off. Article, article, get your furniture needs met with article. Article makes some of the best furniture in the game and it's comfortable, it's nice, it's modern, it's aesthetically pleasing, it's affordable, it's convenient. It's got all the perks you want without any of the negatives when it comes to shopping for furniture. First and foremost is most of the time when you shop for furniture, like stuff is like, like weeks away. You know, they're like, oh, you want this? Great. Wait for four months. It's like in four months, I mean, what? I need to sit down. But not with Article. Most of their products are available within two weeks once you order it. And their prices are sort of affordable because they cut out the middleman. Snip, 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 snip. No, they don't have any of those ridiculous showrooms that are just a waste of time. No, you can just order online. Products are shipped right to your door. Uh, They have a great team that delivers. Bring it in. Set it up. And if you don't like your stuff, which would be shocking, uh, the return process is just as easy and convenient. We got some amazing outdoor pieces from Article at our house. And Justin is a new Article member. Yeah, I love Article. I just moved out of my college apartment into my new apartment. And I feel like being in college, you're used to like, like you the not a, good quality furniture. You you're just, an adult. You're, an yeah, adult you're just having bit. it to yeah. have it. But then now I finally have a modern piece. Mm. I got the Linnea Walnut dresser Ooh. it's pretty it's modern mid-century love and i feel like i can travel with it yep their mid-century modern coastal industrial scandy and boho designs make furniture shopping simple a lot of great pieces so whether it's outdoor furniture indoor furniture bed dining room doesn't matter the room of your house article has it all article is offering our listeners 50 dollars off your first purchase of 100 dollars or more to claim visit article.com slash v-i-a-l-l and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout that's article.com slash v-i-a-l-l for 50 dollars off your first purchase of 100 dollars or more zoa you've got to check out zoa that's right Dwayne the rock johnson's energy drink zoa energy is a better for you energy drink with great taste electrolytes b and c vitamins and zero sugar it's made with caffeine from natural sources to provide balanced energy with no crash here at the Vow files we've been recording and editing some massive interviews as you know and my team has loved zoa to give them an extra boost to get through their days with ingredients that enhance energy levels zoa Energy helps my team find the spark and motivation, keeping them focused as they edit through some intense interviews. That's right. They've got eight incredible flavors like Tropical Punch, Wild Orange, White Peach, and now Frosted Grape. My team's favorite are the Frosted Grape and Cherry Limeade. Yeah, I feel like almost every day I go into the office and someone's drinking a Zoa. And especially because we're cranking out so many episodes, it's nice to have just a little shot of energy to keep you going. So find your spark and order Zoa Energy today. Available online and at stores near you. Find out where you can find it at zoaenergy.com and find retailers like Amazon, 7-Eleven, Costco, Circle K, and more. Denise. Yes. Welcome. Nicholas. Welcome. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I just got chills. Uh, welcome Did to the I Bible scare House. you? No, not at all. <laughs> we are so excited to have you today. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You might be one of the more iconic guests I think we've ever had. Oh, really? And I, I'm not thank even trying you. to gas you up. That's very we've, kind. And we've had some you. iconic guests, but you you might be one of the most iconic. You're very kind. You've thank been, you uh, for saying that. I've been a fan of yours since Starship Troopers. Before you were born. No, no. What year? Or you're born 80 i'm mm-hmm. older well thank god though i did that after 1980 yes <laughs> <laughs> yes uh no i mean like you're a bond girl you're a bond girl i am a bond girl do you I... do you walk into places and just remember that you're a bond girl all the yeah, time y- no <gasps> really? do you know what's funny what? is so I auditioned for it a couple of times and then I had to do my screen test in London over Thanksgiving. And I, my family, I'm very close to my parents. And at the time my mom was still here. And so 
it was over Thanksgiving. And so my dad came with me to London while I screen tested for it. And I screen tested for it in London and, uh, you know, over Thanksgiving and then went back to back home and whatever and then got it. I had never seen a Bond movie. Really? Until after I was cast in it. I didn't understand the gravity of it when I really? did get the role. Yeah. So you, you, when you got asked to screen test for a James Bond movie, a Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie, you didn't even fully appreciate the scope of what you were it, auditioning. It, it wasn't that I didn't appreciate it. I didn't understand the scope of it. I, For me, it was an actress that was like, okay, I'm going in to screen test because I had a screen test for Starship Troopers at the time when I got that movie, and which I did before Bond. And then I had done a screen test for a couple other projects. And so I did not know the magnitude of that movie. So after I was cast <laughs> and it was on the news and stuff, I would ask my, I asked my agent, I'm like, why is this on the news that I'm a Bond girl. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. So I learned quickly. <laughs> did, it, was your, did your dad know what you were screen testing for? Like, was he aware of the magnitude of it or not really? Yes, but I don't think he wanted to let me know that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Before and screw you up my audition. <laughs> He's yeah, like, I have true. mixed feelings about this because I loved every yeah. Girl. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I learned later. There yeah. was some Bond girl that was in a Playboy magazine that my dad told me later. So <laughs> I learned that later. But yes. <laughs> that's awesome. And then I saw the Bond movies after I was cast <laughs> uh, and learned uh, that it was a big Deal. <laughs> what was that experience like? It was the most incredible experience ever in my career. And I'm so grateful and so blessed that I can say that I'm a Bond girl. And so I was cast and then we filmed it quickly and it came out quickly. When people say like with fame, um, it happens overnight. It doesn't. You work your, your tushy off. But the one job can change it being overnight yeah. success. You know that. Yeah. So like you, you know worked your I'm ass saying? off. Yeah. I'm a little different just because I think re I came from the reality TV space where you, your experience in reality TV came after long after you were already an icon, you know, which is not the same for a lot of your peers. But for me, being The Bachelor, it's a little overnight because but I went But it's from, overnight. Yeah. That's a little overnight. Right. You, in your case, yeah, you were like a working actor. Right. who grinded and I, did, I, right. you probably had a million auditions, had yeah. been rejected, all these things. And up to your point, from your perspective, when you got the bond opportunity, you had been working in the business for how long? Like how many years, how many auditions do you think you had? So when I did bond, I was 28 years old and I was, but before that I, Starship Troopers had already been out, which some people knew who I was from that and wild things from that wow, too. Yeah. But when it hits, it's like that part is what's overnight. It's not the daily grind. Yeah. You know? So like when- When, when you have a hit- Yeah, you feel that. It's overnight. Yeah. No, I get when people like yeah. with you being on The Bachelor. Yeah, you felt you, like I was telling overnight people. Overnight success, yeah, is over. When yeah, you, you, you can tell when an episode exactly. airs. The next day, you feel the energy of your season premiering when you're The Bachelor. Yeah, yeah, people knew who you were. Yeah. It's worldwide. Yeah, and that's the part that's overnight. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. For sure. 100%. And it's a it's a whole. Uh, it's a very different experience, right? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. For How you did you and handle your it? Family. Yeah. What was that like for you? It's funny because people always, I'm sure you may have felt this, is that people will say the person changes, but sometimes it's the people around you change. I have found that the most. Yeah. It's always like the like the cousins get weird. <laughs> the cousins you didn't know you had. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, like, yeah. or like you were like close, but like all of a sudden they're like exactly. hitting you up or the aunt and uncle who yeah, like you never you really never paid knew. much attention you to never, is always yeah. like, hey, so how's it going? How like, was it for you? Very similar to that. Yeah, it was. Uh, because when you came onto The Bachelor, were you coming onto The Bachelor to 
find love or were you coming on to when I get fr- into the business? Neither. I was... Oh. I mean, I was open to love. <laughs> well, the, yeah. I was. I came for the experience. I at the time I was living in Chicago, selling software. Whereabouts in Chicago? West Loop. I'm from Downers Grove. Oh, really? Nice mm-hmm. locals. Look, a couple Midwest locals. kids, you know. Midwest yeah, winners. Love. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'll see myself out. <laughs> Yeah, so I I went for the experience. I thought it'd be cool to travel. I had right. I, at that point I had never been to LA. I just was like, oh, this will be cool. And then after I had been on the show a few times, that's when I decided to take a chance on moving out to LA and seeing if I can make a career out in this town. It must have been so overwhelming though for you coming from there and not planning on getting into a business. Yeah, I mean, it was so public. It was very well. I also was kind of the the villain at at first, so I had a I had a hell of a first, which is season. hard, tough. Yeah, you know, I got a lot of criticism, but it helped. It actually, I think it helped prepare me for the bullshit that comes with the thing. I, I find I'm sure you too with that is how it affects your family yeah. and your loved ones and your friends, right? Yeah. There are some people, I got really lucky. My immediate family, my closest friends, they didn't change. They just treated me like I did before, which I really appreciated. So I was lucky. But yes, I did notice some people weren't always the same. Some people got weird. How did you deal with that? I'm pretty good at ignoring people. Yeah. And I would, just compartmentalizing. Yeah, I would and, just yeah, and brush it off. and true to who you are. To, to, I'm, sure, I, I'm sure that caused some people to say things behind my back or say things like, oh, Nick's different. Oh, he thinks he's such a this right. or that. I'm sure that was said. I don't know because I'm pretty good at right. just ignoring the noise. I so. think that's the best way to go through it. Was Bond the most memorable movie you ever made? Oh, well, it's so funny because it's a lot of people ask me about the movies I've done. And for me, the most memorable is Starship Troopers because for me, I remember the behind the scenes and how fun it is when we're on set and all of us on Starship Troopers, we were all at the same level of our career and I'm still friends with. It's a really young cast. Yeah, Yeah. And we were still very good friends and very close. So we were all at the same level and we just were very appreciative and very grateful that we were working. So I think that's the one that I always have the fondest memories because it was a six month shoot. And I'll never forget this one. We all did get cast. It was like, you're going to be working on this movie for six months. And we were all like, oh my God, we have a job for six months. <laughs> yeah. so we were so excited, you know? Yeah. And we we really genuinely were, and we just had so much fun. So I think that's one of the most fun, um, most memorable experiences that I have on a movie. My favorite of yours is Drop Dead Gorgeous, which oh, I feel like you. doesn't get the credit it deserves. It's that is such a great movie. Thank you so much. I don't think we couldn't make it today. Yeah, I, that's what I said. To <laughs> she said that to me uh, literally yesterday. She's like, they couldn't make that they movie today. They couldn't. They absolutely couldn't. But it is so good. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> we so won't good. mention some of those scenes because <laughs> yeah. I think we couldn't. Make it today. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch it with a. Uh, um, you know, skeptical. There was a scene I did that the background left Mm -hmm. during the scene. And um, that was hard for me to see. (laughs) No, no. I'll tell you off. Oh, no. Uh, oh, off, okay. The, okay. <laughs> off the record. Uh, off the air. If people Google it, they'll see. But it's like you can't even talk about it anymore because you'll get in trouble. Oh my gosh. I mean, but that was an I that was an iconic cast. We I, had like, so much fun. And I'm I'm from Illinois. Yeah. And I have an aunt that lives in Minnesota <laughs> and the accents. Michigan and yeah. Indiana and everything. So I had so much fun on that movie too. That it was, was amazing. So we had a good so time. Good. How many covers have you been on of magazines? Do you know? Too many to count, Too Nicholas. Big. Literally. Yeah. Do we know, <laughs> Allie, how many? <laughs> Can we get a running tab? Can we get a running tab? Do a little search. Are you really going to do a search? We have to. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> if, if you if you had an estimate, what would you say? I don't even know. Okay, uh, so over, just no, 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 I would say over two hundred. You know what the best is? Like, yeah, she doesn't know. Even if it's that's shitty magazines. Yeah, hey, those I'm not too? saying like magazines that my publicist got me a cover on. Oh, if like, we're doing. We're doing it all. I, I was kind of meaning that, but you're right. You oh. probably ended it up on like oh. us weekly. I'm talking or... about the like, you know. The tabloids? No, I'm talking like about cosmos. like Cosmopolitan yeah. and, In you know, style. the good magazines. Yeah, the good ones. The ones but, you want to be a cover on the cover of. But the ones I don't want to be on a cover of, I have no idea. It's bad. But you have you? do you know how many good covers you've been on the cover of? That I don't know. So you still don't know? No. So many, too many. Too many. Know. That's a flex though. That, that is. is a flex. That's oh. my point. Well, I only bring this up because this <laughs> season you've been on Beverly Hills but Housewives. Sadly, yeah. the magazines aren't even. They don't, yeah. They exactly. don't have the same cloud. But thank you for it. asking me. <laughs> but it, it's, well, even cooler that you did it because <laughs> most, you. nowadays they don't even exist. That moment. I mean, yeah, they, they kind of exist. Yeah, that's how old I am that there's oh, okay. like, magazines that don't exist <laughs> do you do, did, did you like go out and buy and keep maybe to show your kids my mom did your mom did my mom kept yeah. everything it actually was uncomfortable like when i would go to a grocery store and i would see myself it's bizarre to see yourself in a, on the cover mm -hmm. of a magazine because i'm in sweats and then yeah. I don't look like that. People are like, um, <laughs> are you, is that you? <laughs> yeah. Having a bad day. Very you know? different. Like, exactly. Yeah. Very different. <laughs> uh, that's I'm funny. very different. For me, it was, that's the image. That wasn't who I am at heart. Like I'm a Midwestern girl. I love animals. I, I'll sit on the floor with the dogs and the cats and yeah, yeah. pigs and stuff like that. And so to see myself looking all dressed up and glamorous. It was wonderful as an actress, um, especially when I was younger, but it's a very different image of, that was the image that wasn't, I loved doing that. Mm -hmm. I love getting glamorous and doing all of that, but I also love being home and, you know, a different lifestyle than that. That's, I kind of feel the same way. I, I grew up on a farm in, Georgia, an animal farm. Whenever I go back there, it's like that. I feel my true self. I feel like the happiest. I feel I feel home. Yeah. And here it's like I I what I joke to Nick that like we're gonna tell our daughter that we work in LA, but we're from the Midwest and South. <laughs> because to have a valley girl. Where valley are you gonna girl. live when your baby is born? We live valley. in the valley right now. So we will have a daughter that says she's born and raised in LA. And, and you're she's gonna a valley stay, girl. stay here. For now, yeah. For now. Yeah. We are lucky enough to have some property in in Wisconsin. That we Wisconsin. Will, Wisconsin. <laughs> We're about some Wisconsin. Well, I grew up outside of Milwaukee, and then I recently just bought my grandfather's lake house um, that we my lost. My grandma is from Hayward. Okay. So I spent many yeah. summers yeah. in Wisconsin. There you go. Wow. And many lakes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you have, that's amazing. Yeah, family. We uh, just, we uh, have some lake property that, We'll definitely want to like spend as much That's time as best. possible. Oh, it's the absolute best. You yeah. have the best of both worlds mm -hmm. yeah. that you're able to come here yeah. and work and then be able to go there. Yeah. We feel very lucky. We're excited. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So where's your family? Wisconsin. Your family's in, all of your family's in Wisconsin? I have a couple, I have 10 siblings. Okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> I knew you were going to need a moment for that. Yeah. I am. Yeah. From? Same parents. Mm -hmm. From your, your mama. Yep. 11 kids. She, she birthed out. 11 children. God bless her. Yes. God bless her. And, and she looks great. And yeah. they're still together. Still together. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Living on the lake. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm going to ask you about yours. Uh, the South. So Alabama and Georgia are majority where my family is. So, so they must be beyond excited with grandbaby. Yes. It's my mom's first grandbaby. So she oh is. Oh my gosh. Really? Moon. Yeah. Yeah. She's so excited. Oh, that's incredible. I know. I know. So, She's basically like moving in on Wednesday, basically, kind of. Yep. She's going to come on Wednesday. And you're really and... so grateful. Nally and I are incredibly, when it comes to in-laws, we're so lucky because both of her mom specifically and my parents are the best kind of parents where like they're there if you need. But they step back. But they're not there to tell you what to do, yeah, right. share their unsolicited opinion, be judgmental. They're just there. and They just blend in. How can we help? And they're grateful to be involved. 
And so they're like the best possible parents. Yeah, we got lucky in that department. I'm okay. so happy for you. Thank you. We'll it's need the all the parenting ever. advice you can give. You got any? What was, the, was your first a girl? Yeah, I have girl. three girls. Three girls, totally. Yeah. Okay. So how was it, first girl? My best advice is the best gift you can give your child is time. And my mom said to me, because being raised in Illinois and, you know, at the time, our daughters that I had with Charlie were with Charlie Sheen. So, you know, I they were being born into a whole different environment than how I grew up. And uh, it must have been a struggle. It, it was a struggle. Yeah. And plus, I filed for divorce with my our second daughter when I was six months pregnant. Ooh. So which was very difficult. Yeah. But my mom also said you need to let go of the picket fence. What did she mean by that? I grew up differently than our daughters. Yeah. So the idea of what you thought. Yes, you know, the okay. idea, because I was raised in Illinois, small town. I was raised Catholic. We went to church every Sunday. We had dinner on the table every night at 6 p.m., all of that. And it was hard for me being a single working mom in this business. And my kids were being raised in Hollywood before my mom had passed. That was the biggest thing she said to me was to let go of the picket fence that it's okay. Mm. The white pick events, it's okay to let go of it. No, that you must have meant a lot for your mom too, because there's always, I think, pressure for us to like raise our kids the, the way, way we, we were raised. raised, because especially if we're grateful for how, right. we, how we were brought up too. Yeah. That was the biggest thing because I felt so guilty that I wasn't raising my kids the way I was raised, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, weirdly. And things I, were, some of it was out of your control. It, right. So much, obviously, because of what Charlie was going through at the time. And, and I was getting divorced yeah. and yeah. it was a shit show and all that crap. How did you get through? I mean, especially when you filed for divorce, being pregnant, like what, how did you get through that? Because truly, I, I, I literally can't imagine. I'll never know what it's like to feel pregnant, but I, I've experienced Natalie being pregnant and it's not easy, uh. obviously. and you really need a support system when you're pregnant and you would think, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you relied on Charlie to be that person and he was failing miserably at the time. Right. How did you get through it? I had to because had no I had choice. a one-year-old daughter. Our daughters are 15 months apart. Oh, wow. So when our oldest daughter was six months old, I found out I was pregnant with our second. And then six months later, I filed for divorce. And I went to, I'll never forget, we were at the, on the red carpet for uh, the SAG Awards. And it's so funny when sometimes people see celebrities, couples on the red carpet and everyone looks happy. Mm -hmm. They have no idea what's going on in the car before you show up right. or when you leave. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I, yeah. I, yeah. I want to do a show about that shit. Like <laughs> yeah, before the red carpet, all the fucking shit what that happens. Down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was like the worst thing. Oh, no. <laughs> but, um, and then a week later I filed for <laughs> divorce, probably less than that. And I was six months pregnant. Um, do you remember what that fight was about? Like the straw that Jesus broke the Christ. camel's back. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't it. There was that was after um, <laughs> many fights. Okay. Um, it was at the the end, and I, like I said, I was six months pregnant, so it had to be pretty bad yeah. for me to file for divorce. You know, at that mm -hmm. time with a you know one year old, it was very difficult, especially because he was on you know a very popular TV show and. Um, it was very difficult for me because I didn't also realize how much my personal life affected my professional life too. Mm -hmm. And that was hard as well. And being a woman and all of that, it was re very difficult. I went for, through a very difficult time, but I had to do what was best for me and our daughters. We have a great relationship now, but at the time it was incredibly difficult to, uh, in hindsight, I probably should have filed for divorce after she was born, <laughs> but I, I should have done that because it, the people and the paparazzi and all that, it was, I felt very vulnerable. It was yeah. very difficult, actually. And almost it like hard. you brought more attention to the yeah, problem. Yeah, I probably should have just gotten through it and dealt with it after, but 
were dealt the cards that were dealt. And that was the decision that I made. And for me, what got me through it was knowing I had kids that I wanted to take care of and mm -hmm. take care of them. And you just have to do what you have to do. Yeah. Did you feel like the media or Hollywood chose sides between yes. you and Charlie? Oh, for sure. Yeah. In the beginning, it was me. They felt bad. Okay. And then it flipped uh, for him. And I understand he was at the time on the biggest TV show and all of that. But it was difficult, though, for me as a woman and especially trying to keep things private and take care of our kids. But when you have mudslinging and all this shit and crap in the press, it's very, very difficult. It's very hard. I'm very lucky that I had my mom and dad to help me. Yeah. Keep you, you know, grounded, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Well, to help protect me, like, yeah, it's a give you that safe space, and yeah. and to not read the noise, you have to block it all out. Yeah, you can't have someone who's gonna be like, oh, did you see this? Oh, what someone said about you, the or, cousins oh, who you show up, be that? like, send you that random article right. you don't want to look at. Can you yeah. believe this? I'm like, oh my god. And you know, yeah. being pregnant, could you imagine? <laughs> no, I truly cannot. Yeah, I mean it. And Everything's care of intensified so much. Yeah, already. exactly. So, so it's it just you it. have to block out the noise and protect your family. You just mentioned that you and Charlie in a much better place now. How are you able to get For there? For years, we yeah. have been. Yeah. What, what was that process like? Because we, we talk to a lot of people who unfortunately deal with divorce and, you know, have unhealthy relationships with their ex-partners. But you were able to fit, you know, you and Charlie were able yeah. to mend that. Like, how did you? Charlie and you know. I have a sense of humor about shit. Like, even to this day, I could call him on the drive home and say, oh, you guys asked me. He and I will laugh about dumbass shit or bad stuff that has <laughs> happened. It's bad. And it's been a very up and down thing. You know, he had another wife after me. And I'm f friends with her, too. And I'm very close to their boys. It's just about doing what's right for the kids. Yeah. You know, and did you ever get like an apology that you felt like you deserved from him? I have to think about that. I think I did at some point. OK. Yeah. yeah. Charlie knows. I here's the thing. Charlie knows he could call me at any time and I will be there. And even during the worst of the worst time when all that shit was going sideways with him, he knew the one person he could count on was me. I would always be there. And he knows that. No matter what That's great. happens, I'm one that will put shit aside. You've got to suck it up. And it's because I also have an amazing relationship with my dad. So I want to do whatever I can to make him be the best dad, you know, he can be. And I'll, and he knows I'll always be there for him. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. It's always nice to hear, you know, when people go through divorce, it can be an ugly time and difficult, but to be able to figure it out and remain friends, especially when there's kids uh, is nice. Cause that's not, not, not everyone's lucky enough to do that. And that's great that you guys, and you probably put in the work. I'm sure it wasn't always easy, but. Uh, it's great that no. you guys were able to do that. Yeah, It's been very up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is Sammy's middle name? <laughs> I only asked because why does it, Lola, what does it say? Lo, it For doesn't say Sammy. anything. Okay, just so says letter Sammy. J. J? Sam. And it's not Samantha. It's not. It's Sam. Okay. J. So just a letter. Just a letter. Because my mom's name is Joni. Okay. And... um. Charlie's mom's name is Janet. So we did the letter oh. J. Lola's middle name is Rose. I got to pick that. Uh, and then... Uh, is she named after anyone? Rose? Uh, my great-grandmother. Oh, very cute. I, I think this episode will be out by the time our daughter is born. But oh, really? you want to hear our baby's name? Yeah. And we can get a live reaction from Denise Richards. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. I'm going to take a drink of water before I hear okay. this. Cause right. I'm, oh my God, I'm Harsh. excited. I get to hear this. Yes. No. Groundbreaking. You can say it, babe. Okay. Um, River Rose. Oh my God. I love it. Rose is after my great grandmother too. <laughs> oh my God. So I saw that and I was like, oh, how cute. Oh, River Rose. River Rose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I love Rose. You like it? Thank you. I love it. We have okay. been, what, so, what do you want ahead. to talk about? 
your fucking special forces. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Denise told me uh, when we scheduled this that she, it, it actually broke my heart that Denise was given the opportunity to be on Special Forces season two that your I was on. Your season. I was asked to go on. It broke my heart knowing that I could have been on Special Forces. And you said no. And you said no. Okay. It was a, it was a difficult decision because I really did want to do it. Um, oh, God, that would have been so cool. I just didn't know physically if I could do, mentally, I feel like I could. It was physically some of the stuff. Yeah, they, they weren't fucking around. And that's what I learned. Like, they're re- it's real. It's, it's, it's very real. And you and I, when I talked to you about it, like the potty situation. Gross. Mm-hmm. It's gross. I couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah I could I'm either. not going to piss. I didn't. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, what? I, uh, nature wouldn't let me. Like the thing where you're i was backed up denise i yeah. would be too yeah. <laughs> there's no way you I, hell i no. don't go in a public restroom yeah my body was like i tried so too, that's but, real yeah. yeah what do you mean they don't have like uh if you want to go to the bathroom they don't you have, have two options uh an outhouse that's made of wood that you literally put okay, your wait, your on bare second. ass on it and and, and splinters might or they <laughs> are, are like there are a couple times where we are out hours away no. from base and you know a couple there's times there's no we, craft service area close no. to where you guys are staying. <laughs> there's no craft wait, service. I just want to know if this is fake or not. There's no craft service. I actually found out that after I passed or won whatever you want to call it, there was we, they brought us to where craft service is. It but you. You're not giving access. Okay, wait, it doesn't even feel like you're filming a when show. You are okay. So when you sleep where the hell you sleep, mm-hmm. you're literally in that wood place yes. with a blanket. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. They don't give you a comforter no. and like no. a duvet. No, no. They don't. When the cameras shut down, they're not like here's your fucking duvet. There's no cameras that <laughs> shut down. And your here's your little um no. here's a here's, here's a your little tea. mattress no. and your Here's and prison tea. food. Here's five minutes to eat. You better and you get you have your little um snacks. No snacks. No. Oh my god. An eye mask, maybe. No masks. No masks. Every comfort you could ever imagine is taken from you. And you were for how long? It's eight days. Or until oh, you I quit. Think I could do eight days. It's the potty thing. The potty mm. thing's gross. The potty thing. The food be... I struggled with too. Okay, Are you a picky okay. eater? Beyond. Yeah, That's same. the other thing. Yeah, me too. I'm a fucking picky ass eater. Yeah. I, uh, so I, what did you do about that? Suffered. What did I you lost, eat? Okay, let I me lost, ask you. What was your away. breakfast? Uh, they served every morning uh, fake runny eggs that I, I, couldn't I, eat those. I wouldn't touch. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I you could not, get salmonella. That's what I thought. I was like, fuck this. <laughs> okay. And then, and then uh, what was the other choice? Oatmeal and white toast. I and could do the oatmeal and white o- toast. I ate oatmeal. But on the, like, the sixth day, I was so over it. I almost like I, I threw it up in my mouth. I had to run Why? outside because I just, my body was just so tired of eating this shit. Okay. I, I ha- suffered. Okay. It wait, was torture. I want to know about lunch. Same thing. Wait, you get runny well, eggs no, or well, oatmeal? No, no lunch, I really do want to know so what lunch, did you get for lunch. Because they don't show this shit. Every once in a while. So they did serve like a rotisserie chicken. One, Who cooked it and where did it come from? It would like show up in the, it would just show up. We would, they would tell us dinner's being served and we'd have like- No, lunch, I'm asking. Lunch. They would tell us lunch. <laughs> same, same, same concept. So was lunch and dinner the same? Uh, no. Did I mean, you just get two meals a day? We got three. Oh, you did get three. Yeah, lunch was lunch was. I, I'm sorry. If we were like on a mission, sometimes we would get like bagged sandwich lunches that were from like a good sandwich shop that you might like that. Yeah. Okay, I probably would like yeah, that. Yeah, so that was pretty good. But dinner was like boiled meat and rice. What if you didn't eat it? You starved. That's it. Yeah, and I did. Oh my god, starved. Yeah. I'm a grazer. Yeah. There's no would, snacks all you, day. You would snacks. you would struggle. There's no, no snacks. snacks. No I gra- would, there's I no would, grazing. Like you can't sneak snacks in your pocket. You could try. Yeah, they would probably take it. Yeah, but look at what happened to Tara Reed. Yeah, I know. She snuck <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> and, and... I'd be sneaking my little carrots and bananas. <laughs> <laughs> little almond and packets. I would. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm very curious. Okay, can I ask you yeah. when you guys wrapped? And you guys go back to the fancy ass hotel. Yeah. And you were in New Zealand. Yep. Were the uh the dudes there too? And you could hang out and talk to them? So no. Most people who had quit, like Tara Reed was long gone and, and Brian. No, was, the guys like the, the DSs. Uh yes, a little dudes. bit. Yeah. And it was And that, did you guys hang out yes. and like 
I want to see the behind the scenes of that, that shit. That was great because they were, you know, they they are playing a role. They they gave you no pats on the back, no sympathy. And like all you wanted was like, what are these guys really like? I you know, know? And that's like, what I really want to see. Are they nice? See. Are they actually assholes? You know, yeah. what is it like? And it was that was great to be I able think to they hang have a out. Good heart, right? Oh, they're, yeah, they're great guys. So you guys did hang out yeah. once you guys wrapped. Mm-hmm. You guys all went back to your hotel, your fancy hotel. I didn't get to hang out with them until I. So we went back to the hotel. You I went lasted out to the end. Yeah. So me, Aaron, and Tyler and JoJo were still there. We went out in the town uh, that la- that that night. Because we all left the next day. And then we didn't get to meet or hang out with any of the DSs. Not until like later on when they when we were promoing the show. Like we oh, got to So you didn't get to hang out there? Not there, no. So mm. when you guys were up on the mountaintop and my yeah, husband's so, yeah, obsessed like they're, with this. They're show. on the mountaintop, that's like those few moments where yeah. we were doing that kind of B-roll shots. That was like the first time we got to like see their human. But then side. what happens when they say cut? What do you guys do? Oh, we were just like, yeah, shooting the shit with them. And then what happens? What do you mean? Okay. You come off the show fucking mountain. Yeah. And then where do you all go? Oh, we went back to the hotel. Yeah. With them. No, they stayed, they were, they were staying someone else. So we were up on the mountain with them. Oh. Yeah. We're doing like, we got to talk with them and got to know them there, but then we rode back to our hotel. And that was it. That was it. Yeah. That's sad. But we, we kept, I mean, we went out to but dinner with good. them. We've kept in touch with them. Uh, Nick's invited all of them to well, our wedding. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. You did so good Thank you. on that show. Thank you. Do you know, okay, here's my question on that show, because I have a phobia of puking. Mm. Mm. Why does someone throw up every episode? Because <laughs> they're- Right? Yeah. I'm like, what the they do. fuck? I, as someone, I- I can't even watch it sometimes. I, I have to <laughs> fast forward it. I'm like, oh my God, they're throwing up. Because uh, I have such a phobia of puking. Pushing Why yourself are... to exhaustion. Yeah. But why do you throw up to that? I, I don't get it. I mean, that's I, why I'm asking. What do you eat? I don't know the science that? behind it, but when I ran okay. track and field back when I was younger, I would throw okay. up a lot. I would run and, and like my body would be so, I would like sometimes I would drink water too fast. Okay. My body would be kind of in some sort of state of shock. What was the scariest thing you did on there? Scariest was actually the first thing we did was the, uh, when we had to walk on that ladder. Oh my God. God, that was that was actually terrifying because the ladder's wobbling and I you're know. in the sky and it just you have it's it's crazy. Do you know what looked scary was underwater? That was that was the helicopter one. The backwards dive scared the yeah. shit out of me. Oh, yeah. That would scare the shit out. That of me scared too. the shit out of me. I was terrified of that because I I don't I can't do a cartwheel. I don't feel like I have good body coordination. I so like did it. it was uh, I did well. Yeah, I was nervous. You about did. That. So, I mean, you made it till the end. Yeah, that's so, why I'm so like season three. You could have done it. You should do it. Well, I couldn't do the cold. I'm I'm not good in the cold. Yeah. I right. could do the heat. Absolutely. I would have a hard time going pee pee in a bucket with yeah. having a. But even if you go for two days, what? Even if you just go for the two days, you can leave whenever you want. But I wouldn't want to do that. I would want to push myself to do. But it's the the that part sucks. Yeah, there's no way. There's no it. like. Porta potty. I couldn't even do that when I visited you in Venice in your apartment. So I get it. <laughs> right? <You know? laughs> Fuck that shit. I thought, is there a porta potty down the no. way that they? No, there isn't. No, they don't go fuck. Okay. I mean, their whole. That's and the whole goal. No, they're like, if you, there's if, no um, craft service no down craft, there no around snacks. the there's corner. No snacks. Those dudes have craft service. I would want to ask one of those guys, "Where's the craft Denise, service?" Denise, I want probably I want to see you go them. on just to ask about I'm craft ask services. The camera guy, Where's the fucking goddamn craft service? <laughs> you could probably you have to go. It <laughs> would where's be your like, toilet? I know you have a toilet somewhere. If anyone could <laughs> manipu- manipulate these DSs yeah. to get them a bag of almonds or trail mix, it would. Be Denise Denise Richards. Richards. Could I please have that? Please go, Denise. Please <laughs> yes. go. All right. You have to do it. I'll let you know. All right. Let me know. Off the record, I will let you know because you're not allowed to say you're doing it, right? Yes. Off the okay. Off the okay. We have really been enjoying you on Housewives this season. Well, thank you. I'm only, I've only done a couple well, episodes. You've been they, missed. They were great episodes. Yes. Oh, well, so. thank you. Uh, <laughs> what, what made you be involved so much this season? Well, actually, I showed up to Garcelle had a um a screening and I just showed up to that. I didn't tell anyone I was going or anything. I was truly showing up as to support her yeah. friend, like a real friend. Yeah. I've known her forever. And then after that, the next day she said to me, Would you 
want to do anything. And I said, oh, well, if it's a dinner or lunch or something where you're at, um, you know, I would go. And then. This kind of went from there. Yeah. What made you become a housewife in the first place? Well, I was really good friends with Lisa Rinna for 20 years. We're not friends anymore, but. um, (laughs) Can we talk about that? (laughs) We could talk about whatever you want. Um, Well, let's answer the first question. Then we'll get into why we're not friends with Lisa Rinna anymore. So I was, I've been, I was friends with Lisa Renna for about 20 years and she loved doing the show. And I went on my first season because she had a good time and I thought, okay, this could be fun. It's something different. I didn't do anything like this before. I had done a reality show before, but not like this. So I thought it could be fun. And I, and I had a wonderful time. My first season, we had so much fun and it was just, really a great time and I loved getting to know the women and had a good time. Do you feel like you were welcomed well by all the women or did you the first feel, season the I first did. season okay. yes you know like we talked about when we first started you you truly have like I think the housewife pedigree that I think every wa- housewives wish they had or even that the franchises ideally would like their housewives to have where like you really are an iconic celebrity where, you know, no disrespect to Erica. I love Erica, you know, got to know her on Dancing with the Stars, but like Erica's always kind of like wanted to be a celebrity and housewives made her one where you were already an A-list celebrity and this kind of decided to do housewives for fun. And I feel like that could rub some of your peers the wrong way. They would be jealous. I did it for fun. I thought it would be a good time. And Erica, one of the first things that she did say to me was she brought up uh, about me being a Bond girl. Uh And she was so kind and so wonderful to me and so really made me feel comfortable coming onto the show. It's so different than any other job that I've done because, and I actually, for a long time, never even thought of it as a job. I thought of it as filming moments with my friends Mm -hmm. that were real in the reality world. I didn't think of it as, oh, I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. I thought of it as, oh, let's, we're having fun and filming moments because one of my best friends was on the show. And so it was, um, and I had a really great time my first season. And then things, you know, took a turn my, my second season with the show. Bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, but I will say I learned that from them. I didn't make that up. <laughs> so Is that like a You learned safe that from word? who? Who's them? Your... Uh, um, I learned it from Kyle and um, Lisa Rinna. They told me. If you say something like with your kids or or mention their school or this or that, make sure you do that so that they don't. Interesting. So show that even though you, because you, it's like, right. She got, Denise got the credit for that. Yeah. So, I mean, well, they lied and said they didn't tell Uh. me that, but they did. Why would I? I'm not going to make that well, up. Well, yeah, yeah well, like definitely came out of nowhere. So I, I was would like, just say, you had to... don't show this. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say bravo, bravo, you bravo. You would say, cut this. I would say, please do not air <laughs> this. <laughs> but yeah. the, you know? cre- the credit was like you breaking the fourth wall, yeah. at least. Yeah, I like, did bravo break the... it. Yeah, they left but that But they in. broke the fourth wall before, but they, they hadn't just chose aired to do it, it with you. Yeah. until me. Which, you know what? It's time to air the fourth wall. Everyone knows there's a camera yeah. around. Yeah, totally. Right? It's more fun when they air the it fourth is. wall. It is. I think yeah. so. I think they're starting to do it more, but like, yeah, no, at least I personally, I, I give you the credit. I'm like, well, you were the blueprint for that. Well, thank you. I will take the credit. Then. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All the credit, none of the criticism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I think, I think I'll take the criticism too. It's okay. I think you've said before. <laughs> I've been before, through the ringer. It's all good. <laughs> I think you've said before that they also like the edits made it seem like you were using Bravo Bravo with like a different thing. There was twice when I used it. And one time I used it when we went to Rome. Um, I was, I actually used it because I said something I shouldn't have said about my family. Um, one of my uh, kids said something and I 
I knew they were coming at me because the women kept coming at me for some stupid shit the whole season. And I was like, oh God, okay, just give me a second. I need a second to decompress. I had, you know, it's a long flight and you're dealing with shit and all this. And so I, I blurted something I shouldn't have said. And so that's also when I said it. And it was cut in a way where it was something else. And that's mm -hmm. okay. I'm fine with it. But I'd rather that than what I did say because it was something that you didn't want out personal with my yeah. family. Bravo wouldn't it, like if you came to them and said, "Hey, listen, I'm not comfortable with that. This is about my family." You don't. They wouldn't necessarily respect that. And Which take, part? Well, so, saying something that you're just like, "Listen, I really don't want that out." I there. don't know. You know, I didn't even yeah. for that part. I did. It's like you didn't even want to risk. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was just told. I just did it because. In that moment, um, for that trip with the in the Rome trip, I felt like I was on <laughs> like everyone was coming at me and it was every single dinner for this that season that I was on, um, my second season, it was they just kept coming at me for stupid shit and I just didn't get it. But now looking back, seeing how some of the way it works a little bit with some of the women, I was the, it's okay. They, they came at me. It was like I your was turn. In, almost. Exactly. It was my second season. It is what it is. But in that moment, when I did say the Bravo, Bravo, whatever, bravo, bravo, that bravo. time, yeah, <laughs> that was something else, but it is what it is. Do you stand by the statement that they're like mean girls? Is that still like a thing you believe oh, in? Oh, at that, my second season? Yeah. Absa fucking Louie. Fuck Period. yeah, I do. There you go. It's not cool to gang up. And they did. And I can handle it. It is what it is. But I felt like it was so immature. Like, move on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were going at me about dumbass shit and talking about stuff I said that had nothing to do with what they were coming at me about. I just didn't. It was. It was just like, for them to try. I feel like a lot of them would deflect so that they didn't have to talk about their stuff going problems. on yeah, how does, in their life. Like, how does that work <laughs> in, in the housewives world? Because it does seem like every once in a while, it's just like someone's getting yelled at for what feels like kind of dumb shit. Right? right. That's basically the show. And is this, does it work because like someone says something and then all the other ones like catch on where it's just like, as long as it's not me, so they attack that person? Or is that coming from maybe outside influences of like, you know, maybe it's like Denise, you know, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like maybe producers I, or I how's that working? I don't, I actually, I really truly don't know. I do think a lot of the women are grateful that it's not on them. Yeah. Yeah. And they are like, oh, but. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think it's a that's lot that. what I think. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that too. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's a kind of it and it's works. Okay. It works. I mean, Batch is the same way. It's like it just self preservation. As long as the target's on someone else, people will. As long as it's not on you, yeah, you're all they, good. Yeah, they will rally. And you know what? People watch it. Yeah, they watch it. So Lisa Rena, why aren't you guys? If, do people know why you're? Is that public? Why you're not friends? Have you spoken on that before? Have I spoken what that on, we're not friends? On why you're not friends? Why? Uh, cause she's an asshole. <laughs> I mean, is, that's why. <laughs> what did she do? I don't know. You know, it's really sad. I was friends with her for 20 years. Yeah. I think she got caught up with the being on the show. Okay. And I think she was not at some point the person I knew, you know. So was there, was there, wasn't you that can, one? Does it resort back to that scene that? We all Several saw scenes. of her, you know, saying, oh, you're angry. There was. Um, oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. There was a couple of scenes, though, before that. I don't know. At least from like a viewer standpoint, I remember a scene where you sat down with her, I think, in Rome. And you yeah. were like, hey, like if I was a friend, I would want you to stand up for me. Mm -hmm. Like these women are attacking me. And it was kind of sad to see her like. She was and, in full and she character. Agreed with she agreed. Me. And then right after she was like, nope. She apologized. And then we went to. The Vatican and all this. And she was like, thank you so much. And this, and then we get back from Rome and she flipped again 
So would it be fair to say that when you signed up for Housewives, it was like, all right, I'll do this. I'm going to do it. My friend's on it. Yeah, I'll probably have to learn about how this works and yada, yada. But at the end of the day, my friends are my friends. I'm still going to be Denise Richards. I'm, I'm not going to like become this weird housewife and like play the role. And maybe some of your peers were more like, hey, this is how this, I'm a housewife first rather than a friend first. Um, you know, like, where yeah, it's like, that's pretty much, I wish that she had said that to me, but for me going into this show, I wanted to be myself. Mm-hmm. And when I met with the producers, I showed up in jeans and a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. I did do my hair and makeup on my own. I didn't have glam. And I said to them, this is who I am in real life. Mm -hmm. This is what I look like when I go to the grocery store. If you want me to be all glammed up, you guys can go online and see how I am on the red carpet and all that. I can be the actress, Denise Richards. So tell me what you want. And they said, we want you to be you. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So in real life, I'm in jeans and a t-shirt. And then when I'm on the red carpet, I'm all glammed up. So I wanted to be myself. I didn't want to play a caricature of myself. I I just didn't want to ever do that. I wanted to always stay true to who I am and people can like me or not like me or whatever. So that's how I approached that show. Of the current cast or maybe other women that you were on the show with, who also approaches it like you do and who maybe is a caricature of themselves? I would say um, I haven't watched the season. I didn't watch all my fucking crazy ass <laughs> shit that I did this season. <laughs> um, but I will say Garcelle and Sutton and Crystal, those are the three that I am friends with okay. on the show. And I really, really have so much respect for them. I don't uh, like okay. those are your people. what some of the other women have said and done. Okay. When was the last time you spoke to Rena? We had a mutual friend that passed away, and um, she and I were on the phone uh, regarding that, and then that was the last time. Is there anything she could say or do that would allow you guys to rekindle your friendship? Yeah, if she called and apologized to me, I'm a forgiving person. I am easygoing. I would be good. But the thing that also was difficult for me was not only what she said on the show, she did a bunch of shit in social media that I thought was so disgusting and not cool. Yeah. I'm like, why would she? Like, what did she do? She did a bunch of crap. I don't even want to repeat it because it offends a bunch of people. But, um, you know, that's, it's like she didn't know when to stop. She takes it one step and she just took it too far. Maybe. I would maybe say if she ever did apologize and whatever and truly meant you it. felt like it, if you felt yeah, like it was I, I would be i i would be cool again okay when was the last time you talked to brandy when she was at the uh i i don't know her that was, well yeah, yeah, yeah it was the whatever that party was at kyle's wow have That's you guys crazy. have you ever yeah. addressed her accusations about you two? Oh, i was like this is so fucking dumb <laughs> <laughs> I, she was at that party and then a week later it's like oh guess what i'm like what the flying ass fuck <laughs> it's it's I, i'm like i can't even address it it's so dumb okay you know enough said it's, it's just stupid it's whatever I, you know i've had so much shit said yeah. and and the thing is too the women i think that didn't they didn't understand this about me is that i've had so much shit with my divorce and everything that certain things don't phase me Mm -hmm. because I've had so much that it's like, and maybe if I didn't have all that, then I would be like, oh my God, you know what I mean? I totally get what you mean. I think they also had a hard time understanding why, why wouldn't Denise be this upset? It's like, oh Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. I've had worse shit said about me and my family that I was like, okay. Do you know, so yeah. I think they had a hard time understanding why I wasn't so upset about it. I wanted at the weed party. <laughs> yeah. Here's my take. Yes. Is that you understood the assignment. It was a weed party and you looked like you got a little fucked up as I would. 
I'd get fucked up if I went to a weed party. Were you a little fucked up? Or like, why did people think you were fucked up? Because I just felt like you did a really good job. Well, thank you. (laughs) Um, I was sick. (laughs) Okay. I had to do three COVID tests before I went. I wanted to cancel. They said, as long as your COVID test is good, you can go. I'm like, okay. And I don't want to be like, oh, I didn't show up. Uh, And I also reiterated, I can't have weed. And yet, you did. You know what? We all had a bad night on that show. I thought you had a great night. Why? Well, my husband didn't think so when I showed up at home. He's like, what the what is fuck wrong happened you? to you? I go, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I go, I think something's wrong. I feel, no. I don't feel right. I felt like it was unfair that you had to defend yourself. <laughs> I do too. For the oh, fact that you went to a weed party. And I was like, why, why are we coming at Denise for like, Thank understand for that. like she's doing her job. Like, back well, off. A lot of the women on that show have been a little fucking sideways yeah. mm-hmm. many times. Why did they come after me? I don't me? know. Seemed unfair. Thank you for saying because that. Because you were a Bond girl and they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I know you said you haven't watched it, but have mm-hmm. you seen photos or clips of, of me looking sideways? Of your jacket. Do you <laughs> agree yes. that it was? Okay, yeah, yes, yes. Down. Okay. And actually, my glam, we took photos of me with it upside down and they all said you know what it Kinda looks works. the same upside down and right side fucking up <laughs> <laughs> i and by the way i wanted to get the flying ass fuck out, out of there, there. i so did, you were done. i would have left the damn ass thing you were done did I you probably should have so do you think dorit was just saying Here's something to say dorit. something yes every I, single I, time i absolutely do whenever i see dorit she will be the one that's like, you know what? Your mascara doesn't look good. You need to fill in your eyebrows. Honey, you need some lip gloss. She's always got something to say. So that's why I said to her, stop it. Yeah. I know what you're, she is, I've always liked Dre, but very different. Um, the times I've seen her <laughs> recently or whatever. She's one of those people, one of those women that has to point out every, where you're, it's like, you feel self-conscious. And yeah. when she said my jack was up, I was like, I don't give a flying ass fuck if it's upside down. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and have it and step on it. I don't care. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, to me, no, was, yeah, I get it. like people online were like, no, Dorit's just trying to be nice. I'm like, no, she was, I not. know like she, she knows she's a reality TV expert. There's no whispering in reality TV. No. Everyone's mic. She knew what she was doing. She knew this shit would she be aired. Does. She knew exactly what she was fucking doing. Fucking and I'm a fan of Dorit, but like she knew what the fuck she was no, doing she in knew. that moment. And, and, and when it says fine. otherwise, yeah, totally. Anyway. I'm glad we can settle that. Yeah. Good. Do you want the jacket? Kind of. I'll give it to you. Is it available? Yeah, Yeah, I have it. You can have it. Is it available? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Would love. Absolutely. Um, Looking back, Erica's comment about bringing up your daughter. Uh Uh-huh. I think what I've heard from the other housewives we have interviewed is that there's this unspoken rule of like, you don't talk about children. You don't talk about other people's children. It's not up for discussion. Well, when it's their children, but they it's free for all when it's someone else's. Well, it seems when it's not Erica's kids or mm-hmm. Kyle's Dorit's, but when it's does, does Erica have kids? She, she has, has a son. son. I didn't know that. Exactly. <laughs> um, she doesn't talk about, them. but when it's my children or, Garcelle's that's what the or even Sutton's that was the point that I was trying to make to Erica like why is it okay for you to say stuff about our children yeah I I felt it was so disrespectful no I I agree it was it was very disrespectful I mean and I could say more but I won't with that whole thing with her with her child (laughs) you won't but you are killing it on OnlyFans Right? What do you mean by killing it? Making a ton of money. You know, I didn't know you made money off of that thing. Denise. You, Denise. I did not. I, what, no. What? No. I'm, I don't want to. Hold on a second. I did not did know Did you just throw away hell. millions of dollars? I didn't. No, I did. I learned okay, good. recently, <laughs> okay, obviously. Good. No, but in the beginning, I did not know what OnlyFans was. Okay. And the reason why I joined the site was because, you know, when I started my career, I started out with Starship Troopers and 
Drop Dead Gorgeous and very conservative parts. And then I did Wild Things. Mm -hmm. And then um, later on, after my first daughter was born, I did Playboy. I was married to her dad when I did it. So there can be backlash with certain roles. And so when my daughter first joined OnlyFans and she got backlash, I was very upset about that because I felt it wasn't fair to her. Now, I did not know what OnlyFans, I really truly didn't. So you were just being a protective mom. When I first, I did a post about it. And then um, after I posted it, people were like, oh, you should join it. So I joined it, but I didn't know what it was. And so for myself, I then had to put it in a way where it's like in back in the day when you would join a fan site, Mm -hmm. you know, and you would connect with fans in a different way. And then you learn that it can be lucrative. Are we able to share ballpark, like what you're pulling in? I'm not. I don't even I, know. I just have to ask. I know. I, I, no, I really, I truly did it because I have, you know, you'll see when you're, and I know people are going to, they're so judgmental to me. And people are like, how can you do this? Your daughter. And by the way, I didn't collaborate with my daughter. Some people are like, oh, she collaborated with her daughter. I didn't. Did I do a picture with my daughter's faces and I that was on social media? Yes. Did I collaborate with my daughter for, like a sexual only fans shoot, absolutely not. That is and that's on period. not true. Yeah. I haven't even been on my daughter's site. I was protecting her as a young woman coming into this industry being judged. Take and, off, take some of the heat off of her. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not fair that you know whether people agree or not. And it's easy to judge. How can I judge stuff with some of the things I've done in my career? And when I've done those, like when I was on in Wild Things and did Playboy, did I ever think, oh, gosh, one day when I've, you know, Mm -hmm. my kids are older, you don't think about that stuff because it seems so far away. Well, then that day comes and you're like, well, shit, balls, (laughs) I have to deal with this. You, you know, being on, on, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> you being on Playboy, did you interact with Hugh Hefner at all? Did you have any? Yeah. How, what are he your thoughts He was lovely. Of him? Lovely? Lovely, lovely, lovely man. Okay. He was really lovely. Good. To me. You I'm know. Glad, yeah. yeah. He was very kind to me. I still think it was shitty that the whole like seven dollar thing that Erica mentioned about OnlyFans, which is why I asked how much you made. Because oh. it's just like, I want. Oh, she said that? But she, yeah, it was like, she was just. Maybe, yeah, maybe it wasn't in front it of you. It was like maybe. a, bu- yeah, oh, I she, was she was like, at lunch with like Garcelle and oh, Crystal. Yeah, and or so something. she was just like mocking you for like how much you charge. As she lip syncs. Yeah, I don't know. In I don't know. Uh, I don't Vegas? Know. I, I don't know. I, I felt like it was a bit <laughs> yeah. of a low blow. And all how does I'm, she know? Oh, she's, well, she, she, I think she I does she know. She if she's on my OnlyFans, she had to pay for it. So thank you, Erica. But like, yeah, whatever <laughs> whatever you are charging, it sounds like you're crushing it because I think you're a top earner. I'm all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I didn't like that she was shaming you for that I shit. I for saying yeah. that. I think it's she did. Whatever. She tried to criticize your bundle and be like, you can charge more. Like, that's what you think of yourself is like that low of a dollar oh. sign. And it's oh, like, that's so funny. Well, because, and, and I, Erica is a hustler, which I actually say that is a, I'm a, I, I hustle. I work hard. I work hard. I grind. I, and I, that's how I see Erica. And so I just didn't like that. She was shaming you for that, for, for With, when seemingly she's doing that. <laughs> for hustling to yeah. get yours and only to find out that you were just doing it to be a productive mother. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't know about that part. I truly, it was more about, um, because I've been shamed for shit. How is your daughter doing with being on that platform? Do you feel like she has learned a lot about public perception or things like that? You know, like what kind of conversations you've had? My oldest daughter, I love that she really even in second grade would stand up for gay rights and she stands up for being um who she is she does not that's the thing that i love about her is that she is just such a strong young girl young woman now and i love that because my girls have had to listen and hear shit 
mm-hmm. over the years, even though I tried to protect them from it. But they are stuff they did here. And I love that she is just who she is. And she stays who she is. And that's the only thing I ask of my kids. Stay true to who you are and follow your passion. I love that. Allie, is it time for texting office hours? Um, it will be in five minutes, but Denise, okay. I did look up online and you're estimated to make two million dollars a month on <gasps> OnlyFans. Do you have any comments Denise. on if it's higher or lower? Here's what I'll say. Thank you, Erica Jane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, truly. <laughs> Thank truly. you. Pop off queen. <laughs> two million a month. That's insane. Allegedly. Allegedly. That's a senescent. I am not saying anything. That's insane. Well, we're just here to Is say. Is your husband's big penis on it? No, I he his big penis should be on it. <laughs> Boy, did I Jesus, my God. <laughs> Fuck. No, listen. I, wh- what what husband would not want that? I was about right? to say, why would you want to like Like, do you think I did something bad saying that about my husband? No. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. not at all. Right. Denise, you're I, not gonna get any judgment from me. I, okay. I I'm with you. When, you know what we you know what we say to people who judge? Fuck them. That's what we say on the show. But what guy wouldn't any man be like, oh my God, I'm so glad my girl said True. this. And wouldn't any wife want to be like brag about what they got? In, I don't in, know. Like, I probably should know because then they're like, oh, you might not want to say that. <laughs> why, why? I, I don't understand why. I mean, <laughs> if you're it, like. It's really the only way a guy can actually, you know, because if a guy gets asked, there's no, there's no, you can't. There's no way. No, I'm Either very out. honest. That's the thing with people accusing me. I'm so honest and open also, about like, shit. We're lucky, you know? Like, I don't think a lot of women can confidently say, you know, like, I'm working with some some great product here, you yeah, know? I, some large product. It sounds like you're working with some <laughs> large product. <laughs> with large product. So you get it. Yes, yeah. I get it. And I think I think it was, you know. But do you think you. people are gonna judge you for saying that you're working with large product? Or do you care? If they do, they sound mad. They sound jealous exactly. that their partner isn't yeah. it's just perf- product. It's just or product. Their partner's upset that they're not saying they have exactly. a lot of Exactly. Exactly. Yep. See. I'm uncomfortable. Like, yeah. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Nick's like, actually, we can continue this conversation if you want. <laughs> but like, how I, large? I have a couple, <laughs> while yeah. we're ending this conversation, I want to, I have a couple more questions Please. about yeah. special forces. So when you guys arrive, mm-hmm. are you guys all together as a cast? No. At the hotel? No. So they try to keep you separate as most of Why? those shows do. They don't, you know, they want all the initial interactions to be on camera and kind of, really? you know, like. If, so you just show up to a hotel in New Zealand? Yeah. And they put you, it's like a, it was at a, uh, like a, cl- a golf club resort. So you had a, like a little apartment almost. It was nice. Yeah. And then when you get, so the, you stayed till the end, but the ones that left early, mm-hmm. do they have to stay at nope. the, they leave? Yeah. They they leave and they, they pretty everyone pretty much goes home a day later you know and if you wanted to sightsee new zealand you could but you have the you know so you you can do whatever you want but most people left the next day would you do it again yeah, yeah. so you if you go i'll come back so you really really are glad you did it i was very, very it was very rewarding really? very rewarding and no matter how far you go even if you show up and leave the first day you'll be glad you did it because what it is so crazy it sucks but you will be you will you will tell that story as if it's insane because it is, and you will be proud like, of yourself for, you know, like you have. We have very lucky and privileged lives. We are right. pampered. We 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 have very nice lives, and so to be able to have the choice to put yourself in an environment that has no comforts and and see if you you, you know. That if you can still handle it, that I if you're could resilient, sleep with everyone. Yeah. I'd want to hang out. It'd be like a big slumber ass party. Yeah. yeah. But the potty situation sucks, but and like, the food situation would be very bad. For but me. just, I just know that I, I'm very lucky to have that, the life and the privileges that I have. And, and it was kind of like, can I deal with being uncomfortable for long periods of time? Like, what, like, what am I made of? And you really get to find out what you're made of and how resilient you are. And it'd be, I think it'd be really fascinating to see you on it because clearly, even in this conversation we just had, you've talked about just how resilient you are and your ability to overcome criticism and all the bullshit. I mean, having to file for divorce when you're pregnant, it would be fascinating to see you apply that resilience into like something like special forces and surprise a lot of people. The Thank you for saying that. 
However, the backpack you had to carry. Like 35 pounds. Everyone has to carry it. Right. And they don't, don't care who I, you are. I don't know if I could physically have that weight. It, yeah. I That's mean, part of, like, I don't know. Not everyone can carry that weight physically. That's true. I would have to work out for a year fucking to do that show. <laughs> I would. It would be tough. It's, yeah. I, I don't mean, know if I could carry that fucking weight. So I'd have to do it for a year. Tara went. Not long. Not long, not long. but she did pretty good. Good she's carrying smaller it. than she's much smaller than you, but still, Tiny, it's like yeah. that's a lot of weight. That's a, a lot of weight. No, it would be tough. I it mean, would be that, tough. That, it's and they don't care, to a dude. And they don't care, oh, like, and they don't that's give a fuck. Different. Yeah, no, and they don't. They don't no, seem they, to. They don't. They don't care. But you would surprise yourself. Okay, thanks for saying that. Yeah. I'd watch it. My husband wants me to do it. I want you to do it. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> the franchise needs you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did your season. Oh, God, that would be nice. So good. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really no, sad. Uh, let's take a break from asking you these tough questions. And oh, let's... we have tough questions. I mean, I'm just kidding. You've been. Yeah, <laughs> when are they? <laughs> 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 Who is your favorite Richard sister and why is it Kim? Kathy Hilton. <gasps> is it Kathy? Yeah. Mm, okay. Why? Why? She's so kind and nice and lovely. Were you at her Christmas party? I was. <gasps> did we Why see did you? we miss you? We were, we were there. there too. She had many Christmas parties. Maybe we weren't. In the yeah, sure. The she had like one. five. That's yeah. true. Maybe it's, it <laughs> was a direct TV I, one. I think we went to the like party where like people the less intimate one. I oh, bet you stop. went to a more intimate no. Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Ours was sponsored. It was probably her like actual Christmas party yeah. with no, her no. actual yeah. friends and family. Uh, all right. Well, we're about to give someone else some relationship advice. You ready? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Helix! Helix, the best mattress in the game. Well, as you guys know, we recently became a new dad, had to spend a few nights away from our house, and I was once again reminded of how comfortable my bed was after being away from it for two nights. I don't know what more I can say than Helix is the best mattress ever. I will never sleep on another mattress again. It doesn't really matter whether they are sponsor of the show or not. I will always be a Helix customer because their mattresses are incredible. And not incredibly expensive. No, just incredibly comfortable. The prices are remarkably affordable remarkably shocking once if, if you were to sleep on a helix mattress and then find out how much it would cost you'd be like what that's it and it's crazy what people will charge for a mattress like back in the day I'd, when i you know when i got like my first mattress it was like buying a car helix you just go to helixsleep.com take a quick assessment what kind of sleeper are you sleep side sleep on your back sleep hot sleep cold they got 20 unique mattresses for every type of sleeper, including their award-winning Lux collection. Uh, Natalie and I sleep on the mood light in case you care. And then they, uh, you get a, a mattress designed for your sleep needs. You can get a 10 to 15-year warranty, depending on the mattress that you get, and a 100-night sleep trial. So you can sleep on it, bounce around on it. And if you don't like it, which would be, I don't know, crazy, you can send it back. Uh, but you won't. Again, if you're in the mattress market today, Helix, don't, you don't need to do any research. You don't need to go look around. Just take my word for it. It's Helix Sleep is the way you need to go. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Again, go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code HELIXPARTNER20 for 20% off and two free pillows. Having good skin. Well, it's pretty important to all of us, really. I mean, we want our skin looking fresh and clean and youthful and young, and it's not always easy for all of us. No, it's not. And that's where apostrophe comes in, because when it comes to booking a, a, a dermatologist appointment, that can be very difficult. Uh, finding a good one and then waiting in line, there, there's always really long waits for dermatologists. Well, with Apostrophe, it's an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized acne treatment for your unique skin. Through Apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne. Simply fill out an online consultation with your skin goals and medical history, then snap a few selfies and a dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan just for you. Apostrophe offers access to pre prescription treatments for all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne and even back, chest, and butt acne. Treat breakouts from head to toe. Allie is a uh, very happy customer of uh, Apostrophe and has talked uh, in great detail about what it's done for her skin. And it can help yours as well. Yeah, the household loves apostrophe. I know Allie has talked about just how easy the, the process was, the consultation, receiving the product, giving feedback, and just how active and reactive they are to like your input. So 
yeah, it's a great company. We have a special offer for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash V-I-A-L-L when you use code V-I-A-L-L. That's a saving of $15. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L and click to get started. Then use our code V-I-A-L-L at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode. How's it going? Uh, it's going well. I'm uh, Mackenzie. I'm 30 years old, and I regret taking my husband's last name. Okay. Well, uh, how long have you had this new name that you hate? <laughs> um, we got married uh, in uh, two, two years ago. Okay. Uh, two years and four months ago, yeah. Okay. Why do you regret it? Yeah. So actually, I was actually married um, and divorced once before, and that time I did not uh, take the other person's last name, and it was never something I had planned on doing. For me, I, I've just I've always really liked my last name, and the name that I took is uh, very uh, generic. You know, everybody has it, and I just never really got comfortable using it. Okay, so it's just about the actual name. It's not the significant around the name no like yeah i i tried to i mean i did it because he really wanted me to and so i thought i'd kind of you know like I'd, I'd give it a shot and i've been doing it for you know over two years now i work um in education so my name is constantly being said and oh, even yeah. after all that time it still never felt like normal <laughs> to me yeah because that's the fact that you are in education makes all the all the difference. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably don't hear your last name very often, but that would be the, uh, the yeah, one occasion where you hear do. it constantly. And in fact, since I so since I wrote in, I actually uh, changed uh, jobs mid-year, and I have not uh, told my husband yet, but actually when I took that job, I said I wanted to go by my maiden name. So oh. now there, they call me by that. <laughs> okay. So what's the problem? So, well, the problem is he, my husband is very like offended by the idea. Yeah, his family's definitely really traditional, and that's like that's fine. I get that. I think where maybe I have um, like resentment is that he was also married once before, and that his ex-wife did not take his name, and he didn't make like a big thing of it. Oh. So. But legally, right now, right? Legally, your at last name is his last name, right? Yeah. And I'm guessing to take this new job, you requesting to go by your maiden name is just that a request that your employer will honor, but legally you still have his last name. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, the uh, thing is, so when you change your name, there's like a series of things, you know, you have to go through, change your social security, your, uh, your driver's license, your passport, yeah, all yeah. of that. I did it kind of out of order. So I changed um, my driver's license first, which you're really not supposed to be allowed to do so by my state if you look me up by my state id it comes up as his last name but if you look me up by my social security number it still comes up as my maiden name and he gets really annoyed that i haven't like taken the steps to rectify that well he needs to chill out <laughs> <laughs> and do i agree you, but <laughs> do you want to legally change it back i don't feel the need to legally change it back i mean I, i'm even fine going forward with it's more because it's just a, an annoying process to go, you know, to go wait in the line at the social security sure. office or whatever that I haven't done that. And I don't mind that, like, you know, to all of our friends and, and family, I go by his last name. Um, but I don't know. At, at work, it never felt right. And I guess if I would prefer, like, my choice, I probably would just legally change it back. But I'm um, like, I kind of wanted to compromise with him on it. So there's not really any, like, wiggle room on his side. Well, the good news is, is he doesn't get a say on how people refer to you at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just think the fact that you are willing to compromise, you know, says a, a lot, you know, like I can understand why legally it would bother him. And maybe that complicates things. If you guys plan on having children, do you have any kids together? Do you, are you planning on having kids together? Yeah. So that's, so that's another thing. So uh, okay. yes, we have a daughter together. She has his name. But I have an, an older daughter who is not my husband's. And so she is from, uh, so she does not have, you know, the same last name as me or him. So I already try to avoid saying things like, like, you know, you and Natalie and your baby can say like, we're the Vial family. I don't say right, we're right. the whatever family because one of our children doesn't have that name. 
So I, mm. you know, it, it has less significance to me because we don't all have the same one anyways. Yeah. Well, my family, we have three different last names, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just, you know, Nally, you know, we're, we're going to get married this year. And you know, I, think she, I think she's taking my last name. And I think Nally's still going to go by Nally Joy Public. I don't expect her to like upgrade date her Instagram. I don't know. Maybe she might. I don't know or care, to be honest. I know I did earlier in my life. I don't know. I just, how old is your husband? 33. Okay. Maybe my, just give it seven years. <laughs> my, I, I don't have my husband's name. I, I did my okay. ex-husband. I changed my name to Denise Sheen legally. It was a pain in the ass to change <laughs> yeah. every document and then change it all back. But my name with my husband, like he doesn't care. But I understand how some men traditionally want the woman to take the last name. If I did not do what I do for a living and was in the public eye and all that stuff or have a job where people knew who I was with my name, I would take my husband's last name. But if I was in a job where people knew my last name to be my maiden name, it's a, it's a transition. So that's just you personally figuring out, do you want to do that and change that for you with, you know, everything in your career? Or is there something deeper where you're like, I'm good being my name? Yeah, I don't know. Because I'm, I'm assuming minus like traditional aspect of it. And that Denise makes a great point. Like, mm-hmm. I'm sure on some level, especially if he's a traditional guy who comes from a traditional family, because like I said, younger me would have cared about this. It would have triggered mm-hmm. an insecurity of like, how committed are you to me? Like, Mm -hmm. why don't you want to? Yeah. You know, is there any reason for him to be concerned about that? Or is, you know, you know what I'm saying? Is it, is it coming from a place other than the fact that you just kind of like love your, you love your last name? Like I I know a lot of women who like grow up, they have a great name. It's like, you know, first Mm -hmm. and last name, it just sounds good. And all of a sudden they meet a guy, fall in love. They're like, my new, new name has to be what? Huh? Like, like, (laughs) uh, so I, I get that, but you know, other than that, yeah, what are your, what's your reasoning? I think it's more like projecting. So like he was with his ex-wife, they got married. She never took his name and like kind of a few months later out of the blue, she just like left him and never really got like a good reason why or anything like that. Okay. I think maybe he thinks that keeping my name, yeah, some sort of a lack of commitment. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so. I mean, listen, that's got to like his ex-wife left him without any signal. That must have been very difficult for him. Yeah. He had to process that. That's a trigger. Like, I, fuck, I still have dreams. I had a dream last night that Natalie broke up with me. I got abandonment <laughs> issues, you know, like I've been broken up with before. And so that shit can stick with you. So I, I think the way you handle this is you haven't done the social security thing, right? Go do, mm-hmm. go do yeah. that. Okay. Right. Let's get it done. All, right. All the like illegal shit because you're going to legally take his last name. Mm-hmm. And then in the meantime, really go out of your way to make him feel secure. Like ma- let him know you love him. Go out of your way to really m- try to connect with him. But you do sit him down and say, hey, listen, like I got my social security changed. I know it means a lot to you. But when it comes to, you know, work and teaching or whatever it is specifically you do in education, mm-hmm. like I just want them to refer to me as Mrs. Whatever. You know, and that's mm-hmm. it's identify. I really like my name and it has nothing to do with my love for you. I just want you to know how much it means to me to be your wife. Ex- just go out of your way to make him feel as secure as possible. I'm not saying that's going to eliminate him getting upset, but it might go a long way in the long run for maybe him to realize what most of us guys down the road. It's like, who gives a shit? You know, I got a terrible last name. Right. Like, like <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just not that important but i do think you know from a traditional standpoint it's something that you feel well why don't you want to and if he has been left Mm -hmm. already by someone who broke his heart and didn't take his last name it makes sense why it's a bigger deal for him now you know so you Mm -hmm. just have to empathize with him a little bit more and try to make him feel like you understand why it's important to him and then do what you can like the social security card thing and then see if he can just be okay Hold your ground there. Just say, I'm going to do this. You're not asking for his permission, but let make him feel mm-hmm. loved. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I have a hard time maybe like, I don't know, picturing him like being okay with it because he does take like such a hard line, like even to where if I like, 
go to the you know pharmacy or something and they still have it under my maiden name and I have to say you know my full name he's kind of like all like you know like huffy and like yeah like but, why but, you say but that's, that name but that's because it's a trigger for him and you haven't done the other like the you've been dragging your feet on the social security thing so it's just like a thing that mm -hmm. he's decided to be annoyed about I, I don't think this is going to resolve overnight I just think you no. can try to go out of your way to make him feel secure and the important aspects of your relationship. And over time, I think he will chill out when it comes to you professionally want to be referred to by your maiden name, because it's not even legally. You're just, so do yeah. everything you can from a legal standpoint to appease him, if that's what you want to do, right? So it's, that's, that's the compromise. Yeah. And he'll just pro eventually shut up about it, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> But I really, I, think it has so. I really think it has more to do with the fact that, like, it is a trigger for him and his ex-wife leaving him mm -hmm. fucked him up a I little mean, we, bit. Yeah. We've talked about that. And, of course, you know, I've been, like, reassuring and also been, like, you know, I we have a kid. She has her last name. Like, all of our other, you know, if we have more kids together, they're all going to have her last name. Like, it's not about, you know, commitment, but it always just kind of comes back to, like, him being annoyed about it. And then I know I know what, what you'll say, but... Part of me just like feels like just not telling him that I'm going by it at work. <laughs> you, you can't do that. Like, I know, yeah. but it would just be easier. <laughs> Tell him he's going to be annoyed about a lot of other stuff later. <laughs> <laughs> this is the least of his worries. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. It's just my God. It's just not. It's just not worth it. I don't know. Yeah, it's like it seems like, and I'll remind him like we don't even have like one name as the family, and like you know feels like half the Several. world has the same last name as, as anyway so like it's the more the merrier that identifiable yeah <laughs> it's just like listen i love the name i grew up with it's you know what i'm saying it's not that i think there's more here and you have to figure out what that is yeah and i mean i when i went into like the marriage like i told him that like i hadn't before but i didn't want to change my name and he just kind of took like an all or nothing hard line like no you have to and actually, by the by the time we got married, I was already pregnant and I was already saying, well, this baby's going to have your last name, but that still didn't. So I just had to end up just giving in on it. Like we didn't have like, right. a, a way to compromise. I think you just might have to hold a hard line, calmly hold the line and just say, I'm sorry it upsets you. I love you. I'm legally, you have my last name, but when it comes to work, it's something I want to do. It's my way of compromising. I just mm -hmm. like the sound of it. Like, I don't even like the sound of my last name. You know, I don't, it's not that much, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't understand why people are so precious about it, but he is whatever. He doesn't have to be okay with it. I think that's my advice to you is there's no like perfect thing. I could say, say this to him. That's going to make him go, Oh, right. I don't care anymore. Like that's just not going to happen. So I think you just have to stand your ground and just calmly say, this is what I want to do. It's what is important to me. I love you. Like Denise, make sure, you know, check in with him, ask if there's anything going else going on. How can you make him feel like more secure as a partner? But if he thinks he can change your mind, he will, that's, that's what people do. If like, that's why they are persistent about things. Cause they think that mm -hmm. it's just a matter of being persistent. When he finally realizes yeah. this is what you're going to do, he'll, he'll probably just give up. I don't see this as something him, him leaving you for. No, I don't think, he, I just think yeah. he would, continue to complain about it i honestly think once people realize that you're if you're not going to do it they stop complaining but you, i think yeah, you probably I have a he's very stubborn so. yeah but i do want yes i just want to take but i'm guessing is he, you, you probably like you know he's very stubborn so what happens he's stubborn he's persistent and eventually on a lot of things you probably are the one giving in which yeah, is why he's persistent because eventually you just give in and so this situation you have to let him know as sorry as he's a, you are that he's upset that you're not going to give in and you politely uh -huh. ask him to like, just, you don't have to be happy about it, you know, respect it. And I love you and it has nothing to do with my love for you or our relationship. And our kids are going to have your name and legally I have your name, uh -huh. but this is something I got to right. do. Yeah. And that's, that's all I want. Yeah. Just like to be okay with it. Like I don't even, I work in like a different school district than where we live. So we don't even run into people. Like I'll never have to hear people call me that name, yeah. but I still just know it's going to be uh, like a trigger for him to bring it up. <laughs> sure. But uh, he'll get over it. Yeah. I should just like sit down and tell him that I already told people at work to call me that or uh, like say, Oh, I've already made the decision. <laughs> No, because that might upset him. I would just say, I'm going to do this. But you, then you have to make sure you do. Because if you right. say you already did, it's going to feel 
a little like you went behind his back. Yeah, and like I didn't like feel great about it. I've literally only been at the job for a couple of days, but I didn't even feel great saying like, oh, I want to do this, knowing that he didn't, you know, know that it was going on already. But it was just like in a way to like avoid the fight, I guess, <laughs> which I know isn't like the best relationship thing to do. Yeah, we've all done it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're just gonna have to have a tough conversation with him and you're gonna have to make him realize that you are going to do this. You're sorry he's upset, but it's not going to change your decision. It's not going to change. Yeah. I'm committed. I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I do think you <laughs> going, finishing the legal aspect of the whole social security thing will, yeah. will help because, and you actually doing that, I think will go a long way rather than say you're going to yeah. do it. You're saying you're going to do right. it's a little different. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying I'm going to do it, but yeah, I just hate the tedious process of changing it all, but maybe, yeah, at least balance I, I, out. If you can, do all that. I would actually do, I would actually do the social security thing first, actually do it. So you can say, Hey, I did it. Okay. Because okay, so, do, so then I can say, okay, I, fin I finished changing it all legally. Yeah. Like, yeah. and then like, yeah, I still have like my, like my credit cards or cards, like none of that's been changed. Yeah. And so, and, and then he has to see that every day and, it, and it, he sees it, it annoys him. He gets frustrated. So that all gets changed. I mean, he'll still care, but he'll care less. I mean, yes, <laughs> he'll care. Uh, at first, I just yeah. need to, I'm, I'm not always good about, yeah, just taking the hard line because you're right. He's persistent. And, and then he I'm knows like, that, right, which is why he, yeah. is, which is why he doesn't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm All right. Well, let it, us yeah. know what happens. We will, we will <laughs> want an update for sure. I will. All right. Yeah. Well, good luck. Yes. Thank you. Thank you guys for your help. I'm uh, so excited for you guys to have a baby. I have two little girls. So. Oh, well, thank so you so much. Help. We appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Denise. Yes. How's your belt? Good. I'm fixing it because I'm out of here. She's out of here. I'm joking. We, no, we, we are wrapping up. We are wrapping up. <laughs> I'm um, kidding. I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> I'm just fixing it. Can we, can we get a fake storm off maybe? Sorry, what? Should oh, no. Get... <laughs> God, no. I'm I don't kidding. need that shit right now. Maybe next time. Next time. Next time. Okay, next time. Next time. After the internet, thanks for best friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You and your husband, it sounds like you have, how long have you guys been together for now? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about that relationship and what's something that you continue to have to work on as a couple? My favorite thing about my relationship is that he's my best friend. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like we really connect. I'm going to give you two some advice. Please. Please. So after, especially after you have a child, mm -hmm. to always make time for you two as a couple, just you two. And I know it's hard when you're a parent to take time away. So we always do one night a month at a hotel where we go by ourselves and we connect as a couple and we hang out and- Enjoy just, some big product. And we, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and have that time. And it's okay yeah. to not feel guilty about that because it makes you a better couple, it makes you a better parent, makes you better everything. So that is one piece of advice that I think is great for couples, especially having yeah. a child to make sure you guys keep you two together and intact because that's what keeps the family together. And it's okay to do that and not feel guilty about it. Okay. You I know? love that. Yeah. So that's Thank one you. piece Thank of you. advice I want to give you. That That's what I love is that my husband and I, we both are on the same page with that. Like, we, he is my best friend. And the, the things that I love about him are the things that annoy me about him. The things he loves about me are the fucking things that annoy <laughs> him about me. <laughs> well, that's when you know that, that that's love, you yeah. know, because and like you know. really have to understand who someone is and then you appreciate, you know, when you meet someone, it's like, everything's awesome, you know, oh, it's great. Absolutely. And then you realize, oh, that's kind of annoying. Oh yeah. But He'll say you, shit to me yeah. and I'm like, yeah, that's what you fucking love about me. Yeah. That's why you married me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. That's so great. that is what it is. <laughs> Your ex friend, Lisa, recently, I think put out a post someone asked her like on a live if she would ever want to come back to housewives and she kind of 
was very coy and cryptic about like, do you guys want me back on? She seems like she wants to come back on. But would you ever want to come back on? Yeah, I had a fun time. You would? Yeah. I I always say never say never. That's just, Have they asked you since you left to come back on? They asked me the season that I left, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, but- there's no talks about their upcoming season okay. of me coming back. So that's a shame. You know, I don't know where they're at with anything. Um, but I, you know, I I enjoy the women. I had a good time, and I always say never say never. I would not have filmed <laughs> the stuff I did do, but it's like it is what it is. You know. So so I, if the money, it's not what, even what, about money. Even, but if no, if if they asked, are you? De- well, you're a hard yes, or are you like you would strongly. Would consider? I ever go back to the housewives? Absolutely. I mean, I came back and did the episodes that I did do. Do you know what I mean? Sure, so, but I, maybe that you kind of a couple cameos. Yeah, you not. It might be different than a whole season. Who knows? Okay, you never know. I, well, I, I don't know you. if they would. Even I think ask I think me. I think I speak for all fans when I say please. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. I don't know if they will even invite me back. I don't know, but I uh, I really enjoyed being on the show and had a good time. Okay, I mean this cast is good, but mm. it could some, be better. It could be better. It could it could use Denise Richards. It could use Denise Richards. Yeah. It could use Denise Richards. It could use Denise, Denise fucking yeah. Richards. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> very. So, what was the best part about when that that moment when you said I'm Denise fucking Richards is that. Even your critics had a hard time arguing. Arguing. Oh, thank. Because it was like, I have well, to yeah, say, I guess. I mean, she is in fact Denise fucking Richards. She's... No, it made me feel really fucking good. <laughs> it was, I couldn't say something like that and get away with it. People were like, yeah, and no, they'd be uh, like, uh, you know, I was shocked. I was like, oh my god, I sound like an ego fucking maniac. So, <laughs> do your kids realize? just how iconic their mom is or are they like no she's just her mom they realized whatever. when they were teenagers not how iconic <laughs> by any means um oh. when they were younger i think they thought i worked in a trailer because they would come to the trailer when i was getting yeah. i swear to god yeah, yeah, when no, i was yeah, getting my sense. hair and makeup done they weren't necessarily always on set because they had to be quiet so i think they thought i worked in a fucking trailer because they would come to the hair makeup trailer. (laughs) I swear. And then I would have them, they would get their hair done and all these things and stuff. And so when they got older and we would go places and then they started recognizing when they would go, you know, to the concerts that we would take them to, or especially the YouTubers Mm -hmm. and all that. And they would get their autographs and everything. And then, but when people would come up to me or their dad, they would say, Oh, <laughs> then they were like, like, what do you do? Yeah. Why do people love <laughs> they you? They did had no interest watching any of mine or Charlie's movies really? when they were younger. Yeah. Wow. It's only until I've gotten a little bit older. I don't even, I still don't even know if they've seen anything of ours, just stuff like online or, you know, yeah. whatever, friends saying things. But for a long time, like I said, I think they thought I worked in a trailer. Like, uh, <laughs> At least it was a it was it's nice. True. It was a nice trailer. <laughs> uh, Justin, do you do we have any other questions for Denise before we let her go? Is there anybody from this season of Beverly Hills that if they kicked off, it'd make it more comfortable for you to return? <gasps> I was comfortable going on as it was. Okay. Obviously. Well, <laughs> she can handle her own. I made an ass out of myself, so whatever. You look good while doing it. Again, well, I just think you. you followed the assignment. I don't know. <laughs> well, And I also think Erica was out of, I thought Erica was out of turn. Thank you for saying that. I don't, how could you sh- tr- try to shame anyone who's clearly crushing it in that department? Mm-hmm. Well, that's nice of you, thank <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not making that much. I just I'm in considering only fans at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Denise. I think this is where we leave you. Sounds good. Next time I see you, you're gonna be a new dad. I am. No. I I can't thank you enough for coming. It's been Thank so much fun. Me. I really really appreciate. It. I hope you come back again. I would love to. It's been. Thank a... you oh, so much. I do have one more question. I forgot yes. to ask you, Bethany. Yes. You went on our podcast. Yeah. Uh, sh- I think that was. <laughs> She when she was like, "Do you know what I'm doing?" And then you were like, "I don't." <laughs> but what are what are your thoughts? Because I I've always been a fan of Bethany before. I I don't I've never met her in person. You would like her. I like Bethany a lot. I hate what she's doing. 
I don't know what she's doing, though. I think she's drawing a lot of unnecessary attention to herself and sounding like a hypocrite. But I can't. Yeah, I don't. I, I really don't. I asked her. Yeah. I, I don't know. So. OK. So I'm just go off of what my personal experience is. And but as I a really, person, you like Bethany. I really yeah. do like her yeah. a lot. I've never met her. She's she, I always was a fan. I just, she's lovely. I don't get why she's doing the whole thing. I don't like know the whole okay. thing. Okay. I really don't. That's why I asked, because I don't fucking know. All right. All right. <laughs> and she still doesn't fucking know. She just still doesn't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. yeah. All right. Well, Denise, again. Do you have again, any other questions? No, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Where can people plug away? Denise Richards, I know you probably don't need to do this, but where can Ooh, people I'm find on, you? They can find me on social media. <laughs> yes. You still got that yes. Midwest in you. I know. You well, I can pull it out yeah. when I need right. to. Uh, social media, anywhere. I don't know. Let's... She's an each fucking no, Richards. No, you know, you know I don't know where to say to find you know where me, to find but thank her. you for plugging me. Thank right. you. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. Guys, we can't thank, thank you, you enough for listening. Me. Send in those questions at asknick at the com for all things. Texting office hours, Ask Nick, mediation, you know the drill. Subscribe, tell your friends. I think that's it. I will see you next time. Bye. Hey, guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.